very good afternoon everybody this is the afternoon session of fourth day of our presentations semester two students are making presentations and today we have on indian and western poetics literary theory and criticism uh, before we see the list of uh, the participants uh, a few instructions uh, and a few reminders also uh, as we keep on telling that there are several works that you have to do apart from just making a presentation and for that uh, this evaluation and other things are also very important uh, and whenever you fail to do the work on time then it multiplies my work it, it is a stage for me for the time or even in a proper manner if you don't do we normally mark it out that uh, in the morning things are done so green line we put there and afternoon yellow line put so that and if it is not done then it distorts the data so yesterday viral submit and you all have submitted after that she submitted so that multiply my work see that where and how things are that's why we keep on insisting that before the new batch start the previous one should submit the work and complete the thing and then this uh, when you see uh, the, the chart also uh, in the summary if you want to use directly uh, the summary report or summary chart then if you have done it properly then it becomes uh, easy for us to use this for example they provide when they see uh, it is normally equally distributed, but yesterday Tripti has not selected uh, American literature. So the data can be stored. You have to tell that you have to edit it, not resubmit. If you resubmit, then also it distorts the real data. So uh, and when, when you edit the things, we edit uh, this way. Uh, uh, black color mark, if you see in this column this data is edited that way we can see that these are edited by the respondents that's why this is given instead of resub so if you want to use this uh, information uh, for the, the charts and other things like this also if you see on our seminar website this uh, website seminar uh, website we have put several information here now this all is automatically taken from google form so when uh, participants uh, submit the form so we can uh, and, states, uh, and uh, all these things uh, male female when we say that there are 75 uh, percent uh, female participants so there should be evidence also without evidence we can't read anything uh, students uh, ug, UG uh, all this data we get, we get so if we sit down to work on this it will take so many people and so many hours to see uh, uh, from all those things uh, we use technology that everybody who is involved in the use of technology should understand that that minor mistake error will multiply somebody's work we have prepared all these things so to save, save our time if you uh, Visualize the things, then uh, we prepare the oral rubric on a blog, then your form is prepared, and, we, uh, and then, uh, every day we have to prepare new form with your students. Form can be similar, but students can change. So, with your own name, there is that form prepared. So, in semester three, today, if you will click, there will be somebody else's name, but when you will be in semester three, it will be your names there. So, somebody will have to do lots of manual work for uh, all these uh, things uh, also. And then uh, we do that work so that later on we get a better result without doing much of hard work. We want to prepare various graphs, graphics, charts, classroom performance, your presentation performance that you can display or notice on, on your digital portfolio also. So that all becomes easy if uh, everybody submits the work in a proper manner. Uh, that's why we keep on insisting that you have to do it without any mistake. Uh, along with that, the other instruction about uh, the attendance also. Uh, yesterday and today morning also many uh, uh, came for 
and so uh, as uh, we keep on telling and reminding that we have 90 days to study in a semester in a year 180 days out of 365 days that we have uh, only 180 days we have to study we have to study we have to study in that also, uh, you have to maintain 80% attendance, 72 days only. So, if it is 72 days, then we will send a letter to the parents to inform that the attendance is uh, because there are rules. Uh, sometimes people become strict or later on, after you have appeared in exam, results may be withheld. Even if you take a degree, then also uh, university may ask to submit a degree. And all these cases are already happening in universities. It's not that I'm just talking uh, uh, your imagination, but in this case, many colleges their markets because they were happened, RTIs happened, and then it was difficult to prove what was the attendance. The, the document will say about your attendance. We will just make a photocopy and send whatever document is there. So if on the document, even if you come, Sign be lazy if you display lethargic attitude, uh, on paper you are absent, and that paper may be absent to you also in future. Also, so you have to be very careful about all this. Every semester you have to start with number one, so you remember that uh, uh, out of 22 days attendance you have to do that way you start from the previous semester. From, the, from number one, that you have to do that. And then, normally, the human behavior, uh, like that, when people come under clutch uh, or under pressure, they start blaming other people. These are normal people. And then, uh, uh, what you are doing is not to your classmates. When your classmate complains, it's an evidence that take steps against you also because your attendance is full but you have done forgery and you were not present yet you have signed so randomly doing that because we have caught one person Vishwa was there who had signed in advance who was not in the class so sometimes it will be caught but every time we don't have time to do everything so if somebody will you might have posted on your whatsapp story that I am with picnic here and here there is attendance also and your students may have taken a picture. And then they will uh, 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 complain that uh, uh, this person was uh, this many kilometers away. How can that person reach here for attendance? Then uh, it is problematic. Uh, so if there are complaints, then the, uh, the steps can be taken against you. But that complaint will come on you only. It will be you people only that somebody will uh, complain. So don't encourage. We say that you keep your things okay. Don't worry about other people. Let other people do whatever. You see that you are following the rules. If the government changes the rules and says that no need to check attendance, it will not check attendance. But now there are rules. There eighty percent attendance. Then only so if it is not, we have to inform the parent that this is the condition in future. If something will happen based on this, then he will not tell us that. Why we have not informed you? Because parents will come and accuse us also that I don't inform us that uh, this we thought that our children are going regularly to uh, so we have to inform them. But I hope you understand next semester you'll be very careful in seeing that you will not take it lazily. But that is what I tell every time, and every time you will take it casually and lazily. That's the problem with our students. They don't understand in uh, semester four, so many students. They also say we were there, but we forgot to sign. But I say, why you forgot to sign? It is your responsibility. For three semesters, then also, if you do not change your behavior in thus uh, making uh, the proper uh, attendance, then it is you only who are supposed to be blamed. You can't blame anybody else for that. So that is the thing. So you have got the you have to uh, submit the reply 
with your parent signature with whatever clarification you want for this April month. So whenever you come on in this April time, up to the mark. Uh, so that in future there are no problems uh, regarding attendance and these things. Okay, so uh, today uh, uh, we have presentations by, and we have recorded this also. So, bhulai jai to pachu pachu. Ani andar the day bato record kari, pachu you record for the new students when they will come. You will be leader. They will look at you when they do what you are doing. The work that they do is not very good. Very bad work does not do. Very bad. The whole work does not do. Hello everyone, my name is Priyanshi and here I am going to give presentation on Rasa as the spring, springs of art in Indian aesthetics. These are my personal information, these are table of contents. Firstly, uh, 
this is coat on rasa which uh, which is depicted by selvin uh, lay indian genius produced a new art the symbol symbol and summary of which is the word rasa and which can be con is not present present like this Hello everyone, I My, am myself Priyanshi and here I am going to give presentation on Rasa as the springs of art in Indian aesthetics. These are my personal information. These are the table of contents. Firstly, this is code on Rasa which is dedicated by Selvin Levy. Indian genius produced a new art, the symbol and summary of which is the word Rasa and which can be condensed in one brief formula. The poet or the sculptor or the painter does not express what he suggests. Introduction. The theory of Rus is formulated by Bharat and later explicated and enriched by Anandvardhan and Abhinav Gupta constitutes the central tradition in Indian aesthetics. John Dew has said, we have no words in the English language that un unambiguously include what is signified by the two words artistic and aesthetics. Since artistic refers primarily to the act of production and aesthetic to that of per perception and enjoyment. The absence of a term designating the true two, pro two processes taken together in unfortunate. Rus is a term which designates both these processes and also the objective embodiment of the first which causes the second. The term rasa has in it a bewildering variety of meanings. The dictionary records among others the following meanings. Sap, juice, water, liquid, milk, nectar, poison, mercury, taste, savor, primer, primer finest part of anything. Flavor, relish, love, desire, beauty. The meaning, the meanings range from the alcoholic soma juice to the metaphysical absolute the Brahma. The Natya Shastra by Bharat Muni is the earliest work of dramaturgy, introducing the theory of rasa applicable not only to drama but also to other fine arts like music, dance, painting, and literature. It focuses on the sensitive readers or spectator, aiming to explain the experiences of art in general. Rastanubhati. Rastanubhati or the experience of Rast is seen as experiencing the highest bliss, akin to the divine. Bharat's, Bharat's contribution is part of order efforts in Indian aesthetic, with scholars like Bhamaha, Anandvardhan and Abhinav Gupta exploring the concept of beauty in literature and drama. How is rasa produced? The aesthetic release, release means the supreme delight which is called rasa is produced means rasan, rasan rasnishpati by a combination of the determinants means vibhav, vibhav, consequence means anubhav and transitory state or fleeting emotions means vyavicharya. The theory of Rus. In Indian aesthetic, the theory of Rus refers to the universal and enduring emotional qualities that are the essence of artistic expressions. These rasas or sentiments are the emotional flavors that an artist extracts from their experiences and infuses into their work, whether it be in poetry, drama, dance, or any other art. The rasas are not just fleeting emotions, 
but our enduring steps that resonate with the audience, allowing them to experience a deep connection with the art. Rasas are described as transcendent and universal, going beyond ordinary experiences, means a logic. They touch on the shared human condition, reaching individual differences and personal experiences. These abstractions alerts the rasas to a level of universality, making them related, relatable to anyone, regardless of their background or personal experiences. The significance of rasas being in abstract and otherworldly is that they lead to an impersonal delight up into supremely bliss means anam. When an audience experiences rasa, they are lifted out of their personal subjective world and enter a state of contemplative abstraction, where the inwardness of human feelings suffice the surrounding world of embodied forms. This experience is akin to the delight obtained in the contemplation of the absolute, suggesting a spiritual dimension to the aesthetic experience. According to the Alankara Raghava, aesthetic beauty cannot exist unless the heart of the man of good taste is moved to impersonal delight by the fascination of the expression of rasa. Rasa in various art forms like poetry, drama, music and dance. Rasa's application is in various art forms. Uh, first, uh, in poetry, Rasas evoke sentiments in poetry and poetry embodies the emotional essence of Rasas. Then, differ, uh, differentiation of drama from dance. Drama is distinguished from dance in its virtual life aspects. Rasas from the aesthetic foundation of Indian classical drama. Role of Rasas in dance. Rasas are central to Indian classic dance forms like Bharatnatyam and Kathakali. Emotions in the form of Rasa laid the groundwork for classical Indian dramatic art. Influence of Rasas in historic art. Rasas play a crucial role in historic arts like plays using the Bharati style. Female impersonation in historic art construct a respectable image of whom. Um, there are the nine rasas, Shringa, Veera, Karunya, Adbhut, Rudra, Asya, Vibhatsa, Bhayanak and Shanta. Derivation and classification of rasas. The number of rasas and their relative position, position is an important item of the rasa theory. That now calls for a psychological scrutiny. Bharat enumerates eight rasa. The ninth is added later to the list and the claims of a dozen others have been traced by some revolutionary critics like Rudra and Poj. Raskin in his The Modern Painters names some eight or nine emotions always expressed in literature. Winchester disagrees with him and instead of giving the exact number of such emotions, he only states certain qualities of such emotions such as steadiness, power, proprietary, etc. There are a number of other points in the Rust theory that, that need clarification and scrutiny such as first, the nature of Riti, which is rather in unhappy terms and has consequently led to unnecessary complications. Second, the place of the Rasma, Vibhav, Anubhav, Vyabhujaribhav and Sthai. Whether they belong to Kavya or to Rasik or to both, what is the exact relation of the Alankar Thani Riti to Rasa? Then classification of images according to nine Rasas. The Indian theory of aesthetic art springs from the appreciation and maturation of rasa in the mind of the artist. Its fruition lies in the diffusion of rasa in the minds of people. In the Nadi Shastra, Vishnu is mentioned as the god of love, Pramathas of merriment, Rudra or, Fu, Rudra or Puri, Yam of composition, Shiva of Puri, Kala of terror and Indra, Indra of heroic energy. And Brahma, and Brahma of Pandra. 
such is Bharata's classification of the deities of the nine rasas. These nine rasas and the corresponding lasting attitude and sentiments means Thai bhav. I render it not only by dramatic performance on the stage but also by murtis in the temples. All the rasas that the images of Indian sculptures or painting distill the prayer a predominant one is tainan or tranquility means santa. The image fulfills its roles as a medium of dhanya as the silence is established. Then neither the image nor the devotee exists but there is an old feeling oneness in wordless and image samadhi. In the table I give a rough cla classification of murtis according to the nine rasas. These are the rasa based on classification of ragas. In conclusion, the concept of rastas or essential emotional states has been fundamental to the Indian aesthetic traditional tradition for centuries. The eight primary rasas like love, humor, composition, anger, heroism, fear, disgust and wonder form the backbone of artistic experience and of appreciation in India. Beyond their center, uh, centrality of to the arts, rasas also reflect the deep interconnection between the aesthetic and spiritual feelings in Indian, Indian thought. The notion of aesthetic rapper where the immersive experience of art can evoke a sense of the divine, the sublime and the transcendent unity. The understanding of Rastas is essential feature of subjective experience with parallels in religious and philosophical domains. Highlights the integrative nature, nature of the Indian aesthetic tradition. Ultimately, the uh, centrality of Rastas undergoes the profound ways in which art, spirituality and the human condition are intertwined in the rich tapestry of Indian thoughts. These are my references. Thank you. Now, if you have any questions, so then feel free to ask. Priyanshi, my question is, how does Raza differ from Western artistic concepts? Okay, good thing. Western art, uh, Western artistic, uh, uh, Western artistic, uh, open, uh, Western artistic then often uh, focuses on realism or nature, and Rasta emphasizes, uh, and other side or Rasta emphasizes the, uh, emphasize the emotional connection and transformation uh, of to the con uh, audience. They, that's why it differs from Western traditions. Uh, so, my question is that how are the rasas used in Indian artistic traditions? Rasas are uh, considered as a spring of art in Indian aesthetic, uh, represent, uh, representing uh, representing the emotion, uh, representing core uh, core of emotional uh, core of emotional and. Uh, representing core of uh, emotional okay this is from my Hello everyone, myself Himali Parma. Today I am going to give a presentation on Rasa. Ras, the essence of Sanskrit dramatic theory and aesthetic perception. Rasa theory 
Bharat's Rush theory highlights the importance of emotional appeal in literature aiming to evoke, evoke specific emotional responses from the audience. It emphasizes the role of various elements in dramatic composition and per performance in generating these emotional experiences, ultimately shaping the aesthetic essence or rush. Despite predating modern psychology, Bharat's insights offer a deep uh, understanding of human emotions in literature and performance arts, influencing Indian literary thought significantly. The concept of Ras. The concept of Ras in poetry refers to the essence or taste that poetry evokes, emphasizing the subjective experience it provides. It suggests that poetry's essence is distinct from its natural elements and must be directly exp experienced to be understood. Ras is considered extraordinary and transcendental, realized through contemporary contemplative emotions awakened by artistic representations. These representations convey emotive significance rather than cognitive or cognitive meanings, offering a qualitatively new experience separate from its natural elements. The psychology of the Rush theory. Bharat's Rush theory emphasizes the psychology aspect of literature, stating that emotional resonance is its ultimate goal. He argues that any literary work lacking, lacking emotional appeal is incomplete. Through introspection and observation, Bharat and his contemporaries developed a rudimentary mentary form of literary psychology predating Western psychological investigation. Despite the absence of uh, modern psychology, Bharat's insights offer a profound uh, understanding of human emotions in literature. His exposition of the Rust theory provides insight into the subtle interplay of emotions experienced by both the audience and actors, shaping Indian literary thought for centuries. Exploring Rasa in Sanskrit plays. Exploring Rasa in Sanskrit plays delves into the central role of Rasa or emotional essence as outlined in Natya Shastra, the found foundational text of Sanskrit drama. It asserts that Ras, Ras is integral to the spectator's enjoyment, serving as the driving force behind the drama's form and content. Scholars prioritize identifying the dominant Ras of a play to understand its underlying theme and pro purpose. This exploration involves discerning uh, various Ras, Rasas present in the narrative, such as heroic, miraculous, or erotic, which shape the audience's emotional experience. Critics often are questioning, to, uh, questioning the depth of analysis in attributing specific rush to elements of the play without contextual support. The essence of Sanskrit dramatic theory. In Wallace disease exploration, the term rush emerges as the pivotal uh, concept in Sanskrit dramatic theory originating from the Natya Shastra of Bharat. Russ often challenging to translate into English encapsulate the unique emotional experience of theater distinct from real life emotions. Pravas Chivan Chodhri traces Russ, Russ's route to ancient medical literature where it denoted physical test. Bharat outlines Russ as the relish of elemental human emotions like love, pity, fear, or heroism, shaping the dominant emotion in a dramatic piece. This aesthetic delight transforms the original emotion, presenting a nuanced understanding of emotional experiences in Sanskrit drama. Ras as aesthetic experience. Ras as aesthetic experience explores the integral role of Ras in Indian aesthetics, stressing its development from Bharat to Anandwardhan and Abhinav Gupta. With its diverse meanings ranging from safe to beauty, Ras embodies both the act of artistic creation and the perception of aesthetic enjoyment. This inclusive term encompasses the essence of human experience, transcending concrete manifestation to evoke abstract universal sentiments. Through the metaphor of seed free fruit, Bharat illustrates how poetry originates from the poet's experience and resonates with the reader's perception, emphasizing Russell's transformative power in evoking aesthetic delight. Conclusion. In summary, the study of Rust in Sanskrit dramatic theory and aesthetics underscores its profound impact on literature and emotional experience. For 
from its origins with regard to contemporary interpretations thus transcends linguist, linguistic and cultural boundaries offering a transformative journey into human emotion and aesthetic delight through poetry and drama ras provides a universal language that resonates across generations enriching our understanding of art and the human condition here is work cited thank you if anyone has question please say. Uh, hey Vali, my question is how does Rasa make things more beautiful according to Indian aesthetics? Rasa make uh, things more beautiful in Indian aesthetics by helping uh, helping us to helping us to deeply connected with art and uh, poetry. It it lets us uh, experience emotions like love, uh, love, joy, or sadness, which. Uh, which help to make art more uh, more enjoyable and meaningful thank you another so emily my question is how does bharat's rasa theory make stories more interesting bharat's rasa theory makes stories uh, more interesting by uh, focusing on how they make us feel um, in the uh, story should uh, story should be make us uh, make us feel uh, emotions uh, specific emotions like uh, happiness or uh, sadness uh, to enjoy the reading thank you Hello everyone, myself Jatinul. Today I am going to present a one of the important school of Indian aesthetic. It's a Vakrupti. Here are some of my personal information, points to ponder. What is Vakrupti? Vakrupti is a literary concept organizing from a classical Sanskrit poet. What it is it? It's referred to an artful of language, particularly the creative meaning of the twisting of words and meaning to achieve a highlighted aesthetic effect. Vakrupti is often considered a hallmark to skilled and sportive sophisticated writing and Indian literary tradition. In the context of English literature, Vakrupti has been studied and adapted by the scholar as mean of the understanding the creative use language in the works ranging from the mid medieval poetry to modern prose. Masterly, the Vakrupti is, thin, is a mark of the skilled sophisticated writer. In short, Vakrupti is, a, Vakrupti is an art of of language. It provides a new understanding of writer's words and unlock the new layers for understanding. The two types of uh, irony, dramatic irony and second is verbal irony. The dramatic irony, the, this is when the audience know more about the situation than the character. So it's used to effectively by ancient Greek dramatic when studying the story already familiar to the audience. For example, showing the Agamemnon. Agamemnon is a great leader of the Greek and he leads the Greek army towards the in a Trojan war. The Agamemnon returning the sympathy from the Trojan war when the audience know he will be murdered by his wife and her lover upon arrival. The another note, the author, the P.J. Priestley notes that Thomas Hardy used the modi modified from this. Where the readers know the event will not have the consequences the character expect. As the, in a Greek, the myth of Agamemnon is the very familiar to the audience. When we talk about the in Indian family, the, we already know, know about the Mahabharata and Ramayana. When they both words are performed in a stage, that time we already know what is the second scene after the particular scene. The, the dramatic irony 
concept is the same like it. verbal irony in statement. This no involves the using statement the main opposite the literal meaning. It's difficult to convey effectively in writing without the vocal information. And the best ironic writer cultivates the poet, grave manners, and simple prose style to make the irony. Swift is cited as the supreme master of irony with his clever, lucid pro prose that can mis mislead least the inter intelligent reader into thinking he is sincere, such a mo modest proposal, where he clearly suggests the eating Irish children. The article notes the appreciating irony factors the reader sense the super superlative by being in the know. However, overusing irony can be an air effortable futility, as exemplified by Anatole France and repeated little ironical about the crush. Search. Effect and prose of irony. It has a complicated and subtle effect to the reader. Mostly the ironical work are not uh, easy to understand. It takes a one, three or four times read. Inflated the readers since the supportively by beginning intent the thoughts in the no. The, there is the element of a fearfulness and self-protection in the in it use. Sometimes writers are fear. Writers are afraid to the authority, and that time he used the irony to explain their ideas through in, in his work. So it's a fearfulness element for a writer, and also a self-protection element for a writer because the, he don't directly use the some heavy words in against the authority, but with the help of irony, he try to explain their thoughts in his work. Over can he bread and an area of elaborate of fruitility. Historical context of Vakrovti. The concept of Vakrovti is discussed as one of the five main theories of school of thought and Sanskrit poetics. The river the review provides the following context about the Vakrovti. Vakrovti is mentioned as one of the eight important concepts in Sanskrit poetics, along with Rasa, Alankara, Guna, Riti, Vani, and Ochitya. These eight concepts give rise to the five main known school of Sanskrit poetics, Alankara, Guna, Riti, Rasa, Dvani, Vakrovti, and Pochit. The chapter of on Vakrovti school gives an account of view put forward by the advocates of this theory, highlighting their silent feature elements, shortcoming, and contribute to the Sanskrit poetry. Out of the six concepts, Alankara, Riti, Vakrovti, Rasa, Dvani, and Pochit, the first three, including Vakrovti, is a are concerned with the external accept of from poetry, while the latter three deal with the inner concept of core poetry. The mostly Vakrovti is the deal with the outer side, outer part of the poetry. The five school are regarded as five ways the synthesizing the basic concept in Sanskrit poetry rather than conflicting theories. Vakrovti in classical Sanskrit liter literature. As you all know, Kuntak is a founder of Vakrovti. But uh, the Kalidas and Bhavuti are more famous for his ironical work in Sanskrit. Vakrovti, a concept uh, originally in Asian Sanskrit literature, gained promise in a classical Indian poetic, uh, recounts the Sanskrit, Sanskrit poet like uh, Kalidas, Bhavuti, masterly employed the Vakrovti techniques in introducing their words with theoretical uh, layers of meaning and linguistic sophistication. The classic Sanskrit uh, tradition celebrated the Vakrovti as the means of uh, elevating the written words, leveling all eviculi expression, metaphor, and a rhetorical device to translate the literal, literal and evoke the deeper emotion and insights. Vakrovti in uh, English literature, according to the article by Kethal Brooks, Brooks defined his use of the term irony in a Order sense and the conventional use to describe the relationship between the parts and all the poetry. He knowledge the criticism that has once and extend the meaning to the term. He argued that the parts of the poem origi originally related the whole context, not just a randomly image statement or just a post. The meaning of any particular line, image, and qualified and shaped by surrounding the context. These are Context qualification of modification 
or meaning is analogous to what the typical cold iron event. There is an over oat relievers under, undercutting of the literary meaning, but Brooks is, is important of subtle ways, even simple lyric. He analyzed the example like Sir Shakespeare's who is Silva and what's what the uh, slumber did my spirit see to show how meaning and statements is shaped and not by the total context. According to the Clint Brooks, uh, it likes to convey that uh, no, any particular line or image is important to shape the whole point or whole stories. Bhakrapti in a works of Jane Austen. In a Jane Austen famous novel, she play, cleverly used the technique called Vakrupti. This technique involves the suggestion, I, suggesting ideas indirectly rather than the stating the outer right. Austin used the, this approach to delve into deep themes and promote the human behavior in a sophisticated, subtle, subtle way. Vakrupti in the novels of Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens, the famous Victorian writer, used to literary technique called Vakrupti in his well-known books. In a story like a Oliver Twist and Great Expectation, he cleverly hinted the ideas inside the st starting them directly. This made this narrative rich and complex. Dickens was good at noticing how people behave and speak, and he used this skill to show deeper meaning in his story. This made him one of the first writers to use Vakrupti in English literature. Vakrupti in writing of Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde, a famous Irish writer, had a unique way of using a language. He often hinted at an idea inside the saying the directly, which was called Vakrupti. In his poem and plays like a lady with such fan and the picture of Dorian Gray, while he used the clever phrase and paradox to challenge the story norm. His language was both thought provoking the enjoyable as it explored the deep topics like right and wrong, who are where and what it means to women. Vakrupti in the modernist era in James Joyce and Virginia Woolf's work. The works of literary giants James Joyce and Virginia Woolf importance the innovation spirit of the modernist moment through their experiential style and unconventional narrative techniques. They masterly brought the concept of Vakrupti into the fabric of their groundbreaking novels. Joyce's stream of consciousness rating walls and with the internal lyric prose exemplifies the model employed by the Vakrupti. We Vakrupti and the stream of consciousness we find on James Joyce Ulysses' work when the in a, he used the stream of consciousness to describe his, his protagonist uh, who just walking in red light area. He takes uh, 30 lines to describe this processing in a single page. And uh, Virginia Woolf uh, exemplified the modernist inversion in Vakrupti in this we find out in a famous autobiographical novel, Old Land. The Sanskrit term of the artful use of forgive language and poetic diverse to convey the complexity of the human experience. In a conclusion, Vakrupti in English literature show us how author cleverly hint and ideas instead of studying them directly. Writers like Jane Austen, Charles Dickens, and Oscar Wilde use this technique to make their stories more interesting and for providing by the using indirect language. They explore important themes like the human behavior and society rules in the way that capacity to write readers. This Arctic approach has left a lasting impact on literature showing us how powerful and image storylining can be. Some words cited of my PPT. Thank you. Then my question is, who was the first writer to introduce a Vakrupti in English language and literature? When we told about Sanskrit language, though we know the Kuntak is a founder and uh, Kalidas and Bhavuti is a famous Vakrupti writer in Sanskrit language. But in uh, English literature and uh, language, as per my knowledge, I go with uh, Charles Dickens.
તો જતીલ વાય ડુ રાઇટર્સ યુઝ વક્રોક્તિ ઇન ધેર વર્ક્સ રાઇટર યુઝ વક્રોક્તિ ઇન ધેર વર્ક્સ બીકોઝ હી વક્રોક્તિ પ્રોવાઇડ્સ ધેર વર્ક્સ અ ન્યુ લેયર ઓફ અન્ડરસ્ટેન્ડિંગ એન્ડ હી અનલોક ધ ન્યુ લેયર ફોર ઓલ્સો રીડર ટુ અન્ડરસ્ટેન્ડ એન્ડ ઇટ્સ હેલ્પ ટુ રાઇટર ટુ એન્ગેજ ધેર રીડર્સ ઇન હિઝ વર્ક ઓકે તો ધેટ્સ એન્ડ ફ્રોમ માય સાઈડ થેન્ક યુ એવરીવન Hello everyone, uh, myself Pallavi and today I will deal with the topic Exploring the Depth of Human Emotion, Risa Theory in Kai Dasa's Abhignan Shakuntaram. Here are my personal information. These are table of contents which I will deal in this presentation. Let's uh, firstly see about Risa Theory. Risa is an Indian aesthetic concept essential in visual, literary or performing arts, uh, which is attribu uh, attribution of it, uh, which is started by uh, uh, Saint Sage Bharata. Priest is uh, uh, credited with developing the theory of Risa and the credit to develop this theory is go uh, goes to uh, Abhinav Gupta, who is a rhetorician and a philosopher around 1000 uh, Uh, further uh, elaborated on theory of rasa uh, uh, and abhinav gupta also uh, uh, developing that uh, when bharat muni gives uh, eight rasa at that time abhinav gupta uh, uh, who is belong to 1000 common era who gives uh, that ninth rasa shantra uh, who add in that eight rasa uh human feeling uh, bharat identifies principal human uh, emotions such as delight laughter sorrow anger fear disgust heroism and astonishment this information is taken from britannica uh to continue uh, let's say rasas these emotions are tra transformed into various rasas uh, we can say that aesthetic flavors or emotions uh erotic comic pathetic furious heroic terrible odious marvelous and quite tasty we can find this nine type of rasas uh, which is a uh, uh, rasa is the form the components of aesthetic experience that enriching that the artistic expressions uh, merit based the ability to appreciate rasa is seen as a reward for spiritual merit uh, from past lives uh, this is also taken from britannica uh, now let's see this uh, more about rasa theory uh, we can find that uh, its origin in uh, natya shastra it, which is first uh, appears in natya shastra and attributed to bharat uh, rishi bharat uh, and sanskrit uh, text to perform arts uh, that uh, there is a myth about natya shastra that it is a, a sanskrit or that divine type of uh, 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 grant we can say that uh, uh, which uh, describes that uh, uh, all the uh, uh, all the rules about uh, natya shastra natya shastra uncertain uncertainty of dating the natya shastra date is the uncertain uh, uh, concept of rasa rasa denotes an aesthetic sense of flavor experienced by or emotion that experienced by audience during a performance of any artistic representation Uh, actor audience relationship in uh, hindu aesthetics uh, the actor portrayal of emotions allow, allows the audience to taste or experience these emotions indirectly when uh, uh, when we totally involve as the audience totally involve in uh, that particular work or particular representation of art uh, we can also feel that we, uh, that we are in that situation uh, 
that uh, we have, uh, we can uh, imagine or we can experience uh, without getting into that uh, difference from real life. Rasa distinguishes between experiencing emotions in daily life and experiencing them through artistic repre representation. That we are uh, th there is no need to uh, experience this in real life. We can get idea uh, from that representation. Rasa categories. Uh, Bharat initially mentions six rasas in drama, later expanding to eight. Uh, these rasas represent elemental human emotions such as love, pity, fear, heroism, and mystery. Uh, transformation of emotions. In real life, emotions are raw and insti instinctual, uh, uh, de devoid of conscious reflection. However, in drama, emotions are contemplated and infused with meaning through artistic ex, uh, expression that we can experience uh, uh, that uh, rasa or that emotion uh, in that uh, we can say that in control environment and we can uh, experience it in both the manner uh, contemplative experience the audience engages with emotions in drama through contemplation and thought gaining deeper insights in their significance impact Escape through understanding. While experiencing emotions in drama, the audience simultaneously escape the direct passive immersion of life. Emotions by uh, comprehending their uh, artistic portrayal and symbolic reason, uh, reason, uh, resonance. Sorry. Uh, so by that we can say that uh, as the audience, we can experience that uh, emotions of love, pity, fear, heroism, mystery that we can imagine ourselves as a uh, as an actor, uh, as an actor portray himself, we can imagine ourselves. Uh, these are key concepts of Rasa theory, Vibhav, which means uh, determinates. Uh, we can, when uh, uh, on the stage or in the, uh, in uh, uh, in any art form, we can find that uh, Vibhav means to experience something which is a, uh, uh, which is not uh, physical, which is not in a physical form. We can feel that, uh, like example, that when two uh, uh, far from each other uh, lovers, when, when they meet to uh, each other, we can find that uh, happiness or longing or that fulfillment, uh, it is uh, called vibhav. Uh, and then next is anubhav, that consequences. Like uh, when uh, uh, something is happened on stage, that we can find that physical uh, expression on stage or... Uh, uh, on our uh, so that is uh, falls under the category of anubhav, sanchari bhav uh, or transitory mental state. That uh, that type of emotions which are not uh, core or which are not static uh, emotions, which are uh, 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 frequently uh, transforms or changing uh, by time to time. Uh, which is called as a sanchari bhav. Like we uh, at one situation we are happy and uh, another situation we are unhappy. Uh, sthai bhava that, that means permanent mental state that uh, uh, which uh, which rasas are uh, sthai in our uh, like they are core uh, uh, like uh, uh, we can feel it and it it uh, last uh, its impact due uh, very long time we can feel that uh, feel it very for a very long time uh, this is also, uh, this is uh, taken from uh, uh, article of Wallace Des. And this all uh, also taken from their article. Uh, this is the table of nine dresses. Then we can find that these nine dresses are uh, majorly uh, described by critics and uh, that uh, developers. And the first one is Shringar, means love. Uh, associated bhav or emotion is rati, meaning uh, is love and delight. And color which we can uh, connect with that, that pale light green color. That hasya uh, means humorous. We can find associated by hasa, has, or meaning is laughter, or color is white. Karuna means pathetic, kindly, uh, which is associated with shok, meaning sorrow, and we can find it is collected with a gloomy or gray color. Rodraras means furious, which is associated with crowd, uh, meaning is anger, and uh, we can find it uh, with red color. Vira, we can uh, find it with uh, utsah. Uh, meaning is heroism, we can find a pale orange color with bearers. Bhayanak means fearful, that uh, bhaya bhav, we can, uh, that meaning of is fear and uh, black color is represented there. Bibatsa means odious, uh, bhav is chukupsa, we, we can feel that hate or disgust uh, with something and color is blue. Uh, another bhav is adbhut, uh, uh, associated emotion is vismai or meaning is wonder. Color uh, we can find uh, of it is yellow. 
and ne uh, at the last bhav is shant peaceful how is shant and meaning is peace or color is white uh, this uh, idea of table uh, which i uh, which i uh, taken from uh, swapna koshish uh, book rasa theory book Uh, now let's see uh, about uh, abhignan shakuntalam uh, it is also written as uh, uh, in uh, this th uh, three forms like abhi uh, bijnana shakuntalam abhignana shakuntalam or only shakuntalam author is kalidas uh, who is belong from 15th century uh, common era uh, significance is considered one of the greatest indian literary works we can find the plot is king uh, about king dushyant and the nymph who is the daughter of uh, uh, sage vishwakarma and uh, uh, melika shakuntala and uh, uh, we can find that uh, uh, they fall in love with each other king rejects shakuntala and their child and later they re uh, reunited uh, at uh, finally they are reunited in heaven key characters are shakuntala who is a heroine of the uh, this uh, play and uh, uh, hero is dushyant uh, we can find the theme of uh, aristocratic ideals through characters that uh, exploration of love duty and consequences of actions that uh, character development we can find dushyant dushyant's uh, separation from shakuntala is due to sage curse sage uh, uh, durvasa's curse not his direct actions so we can find that character development in th that sense uh, nature depiction kalidas uh, uh, is uh, obsessed with uh, he always uh, uh, depicts nature in his uh, in blossom full blossom form like we can find it in kumar sambhav or other his uh, other his other works This is also taken from Britannica. Uh, now let's see uh, which is a core bhav. Shringar is a core bhav, and we can find that Shakuntala is a uh, uh, Shakuntala is the one who uh, held hold that the Shringar does. That she is very innocent throughout the play. That uh, she is very shy to express her love. Uh, that she is uh, natural. Uh, we can say that naturally we can find Shringar us in her. Uh, uh passion and union shakuntala becomes the object of dushyant's intense passion like at the first sight uh, he fell in love with her and uh, at that time we can find that uh, that strong attraction uh, at that time shringaras uh, at first they uh, shringaras uh, appeared uh, on stage this uh, uh, this is taken from sakya's uh, sakya's uh, sorry article Uh, let's see shringaras as a major a joyous reunion they uh, find that the joyous reunion there at first they uh, united with the gandharva tradition marriage and after that uh, uh, dushyant uh, leaves shakuntala and uh, promises her to i will uh, i will uh, come came back and uh, 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 we we have a life together and uh, i i will be here for you and uh, after that sometime in act 4 we can find that uh, uh, rishi durvasa uh, curse uh, shakuntala to uh, her her husband uh, for, uh, for forget her her and after that we can find that their reunion their suffering and separation uh, that we can find that in that uh, that uh, uh, sli slightly that uh, mention of shringaras we can also find that uh, shakuntala sorrow for departure pure contrasting love uh, we can find that uh, shakuntala is the innocent love that we see uh, earlier let's see how rasa theory uh, applicable in shakuntala in shakuntala that shringara is the core rose we can find that uh, in the beginning the relationship when they started at that time this uh, rose appeared on stage that it is the dominant rose uh, according to all the nine rose uh, that uh, it, it is believable by all the critics that uh, uh this rose is a, a dominant rose in uh, throughout the play and this i have taken from uh uh edwin george article uh next is karun pathetic rose that we can find that vimarsha samadhi in fourth act in that uh, dushyant forgot shakuntala due to sage durvasa's curse the mood of their love transforms into the one poignant separation and sorrow that uh, symbol of sympathy we can find that sympathy towards uh, uh, shakuntala and uh, uh, to their loss and separation uh, next one is rodra or furious rose 
we can find in uh, garbha samadhi in third act when uh, a conflict that inner conflict between uh, dushyant we can find that uh, what i choose be, uh, between love and duty and another one is the anger of sage durvasa that uh, uh, that creates a tension in the play in conflict and external as well as internal tension this is also i have taken from edward Dr uh, uh, drus article uh, next one is hasya comic rus uh, that pratimukh samadhi in second act we can find that uh, 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 in sanskrit plays that vidushak uh, plays the role as a comedic play uh, who creates a humorous environment uh, we can also find that shakuntala's humorous uh, side uh, his personality is humorous side in this veera or uh, heroic rus we can find dushyant uh, at first uh, act we can find that when uh, one b tries to uh, uh tries to uh, uh, uh see uh, gaze around the shakuntala at that time he just appeared as the uh, as a brave soldier and at that time we can find that uh, little uh, appearance of veeras uh, this also taken from edwin drus article that the heroism is a code we can find that in yuddha varanan also we can find that uh, uh, this type of uh, heroism uh, in conclusion i would like to say that in kalidas play uh, abhignan chakuntalam the use of rasa theory helps bring out deep human emotions in compelling the way through different emotional flavors like love humor sorrow anger heroism the story becomes rich and relatable the love story between shakuntala and king dushyant with its twist of fate and conflicting duties feels real and touching kalidas skillful storytelling and understanding of rasa theory make abhignan shakuntalam a timeless masterpiece that uh, continues to resonate with the audiences and showcasing us the profound complexities of human feeling and experience that as audience we are never bored to see that uh, play uh, so kalidas uh, 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 according to critics that kalidas holds that skill to uh, hold every audience and reader to to his play uh, these are some references yeah that's it from my side now if you have any question feel free to ask How does the character of Shakuntala embody different emotional states throughout the play? Uh, characters embody uh, character of Shakuntala that uh, emotional states. Like we can find that uh, uh, while reading her, we can find that she is very pure and innocent. And, uh, in her uh, sorrowness, we can find that we are also sad because of her situation. We are also happy with her. Uh, so we can find that different emotional states uh, we can connect with uh, her also uh, throughout the play yeah so the way how does kalidas balance different rasa emotional flowers such as hasya karuna and veera in the story uh, kalidas balance uh, this rasa like uh we can find that when uh, it comes very t uh, tense situation uh we can find that appearance of vidushak uh that friend of king dushyant and uh, in all the uh, situation like uh, karuna we also find that uh, at one level we can find that pitiful uh, that uh, Uh, sorrowness towards uh, Shakuntala when uh, she is pregnant with her child uh, of uh, King Dushyant, but King Dushyant denies that this is not my child, and you are very cunning uh, woman who tries to uh, uh, tries to uh, uh, be my wife uh, uh, and giving th this type of uh, uh, this type of uh, reasons. Uh, at that time, we can find that uh, uh, sorrowness. and uh, we we can also find that uh, youth varanan and uh, all that uh, situation battle field and we can find that heroism in through our story line yeah thank you
Hello everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Kushi Rathod. Today, uh, fourth day of the presentation, uh, paper number one zero nine. Uh, my topic is divine into emotion, exploring Shakespeare's tragedies uh, through the lens of Rasa theory. Uh, this is my personal information. Uh, this is a table of content which I discuss. First, concept of Rasa theory. Uh, uh, rasa literally means taste or essence. It refers to the unique subjective experience that poetry provides beyond just the objective descriptive elements. Uh, rasa is seen as a distinct quality that can only be directly experienced, not to merely described through the external determinant like natural uh, situation, human emotion, etc. Uh, rasa arises when an emotion is evoked in the reader's yeah, viewers in a uh, contemplative impersonal manner rather than the usual uh, personal uh, experience of emotions. The representation in art generalizes and idealizes the emotional elements. There is a distinct uh, distinct uh, between uh, dominant uh, permanent emotion, sahitya bhav, and uh, transcendent uh, essential emotion, vyabhijari bhav, in a poem. Uh, the harmonious inter uh, interplay of this creates the overall Rasa experience. Uh, this uh, information taken Jodri article. Uh, this is nine Rasa. Uh, this is uh, an uh, table uh, taken by uh, Swapna Koshya book. Uh, the, uh, this nine Rasa uh, uh, Bharat uh, talk about the Natya Shastra in 6th chapter uh, in uh, written by Anushtup Chan, uh, Shringar, uh, Bhav of Rati, Hasya, uh, Bhav of uh, Hasa, Rodra, Angar, uh, Bhav of Krodha, Karuna, Pethos, uh, Bhav of Shoka, Veer, uh, uh, Heroic, uh, Bhav of Utsa, Adbhut, Mysterious, uh, Bhav of uh, Vismai, uh, Vibhastha, the odious uh, bhav of Chugupsa, uh, Bhayana, terrific uh, bhav of uh, Bhaya, uh, Shanta, uh, bhav of uh, Sama. Uh, three types of bhav, Sahitya bhav, Sanchari bhav, Sattvik bhav. Sthai means stable, Sanchari bhav, uh, in, uh, 33 in Sanchari bhav, uh, Sattvik bhav, uh, definition of Rasda, according to Bharat, Vibhavnu, uh, Vibhavnu Bhav Vyabhichari Sanchar Sanyoga uh, uh, Rasa Nishpati. These four parts uh, to divide Vibhav, Anubhav, Vyabhichari Bhav and Sanyog. Uh, Vibhav to divide in two parts. Uh, Uddipan Bhav and Aramabin Bhav. Uh, four critics to write in uh, Rasa Bhat Lola, Sri Shanku, Bhat Naya and fourth Abhino Gupta. Uh, this information taken by uh, uh, Swapna Koshya uh, text. Uh, uh, Shakespeare uh, two tragedy Hamlet and uh, Macbeth, which I discussed first Hamlet. Uh, Hamlet uh, first Shingar. Uh, Hamlet and his wife uh, Ophelia to see a uh, uh, love. Uh, so Shingar to explore. Second, Karunras, compassion and sorrow. Uh, the, uh, the pressing theme of sorrow and loss in Hamlet along with the Karunras. Hamlet uh, did grief of his father's death and mother's to remarriage to profound empathy from the audience. Uh, Rodras, Hamlet built for uh, against his uncle Claudius. Mirror of the Rodrarus. The Indians are part the furry, similar with the Hamlet plot, Monomantius. Uh, Hamlet in our uh, famous play, within a play, scene where Hamlet explores the Claudius guilt. Uh, things where um, uh, serve as a dramatic expression of emotion, highlighting the overall intensity of the narrative via Nakras. The ghost of King, Hamlet. Appearing as an ominous figure, uh, fear, anxiety in a bayanakras, 
Besides the grave digger things, are there other intents of the comedic relief in Hamlet and how do they impact the audience emotion experience? Okay. Uh, in the grave, uh, grave digger scene, uh, the other uh, Hamlet and uh, Polonius to uh, comedic relief in this uh, scene and uh, uh, in uh, the audience to uh, emotional experience to Break, break the break the sorrow, loss of consciousness, uh, to uh, in in comedy. Really.
Kushi, my question is, according to you, what are some examples of Anubhava displayed by Macduff and Malcolm in Macbeth? And how do they illustrate the experience of Karun Ras? Um, Mac, uh, Macbeth and Malcolm in Macbeth. Uh, Macbeth to sorrow uh, because of his family's death. And Malcolm uh, to revenge in a state of Scotland. Uh, and his illustrious experience in Karun Ras. Because Mac, uh, Malcolm, Mac, uh, Macbeth to sorrow guilt and uh, ma uh, Macbeth to revenge uh, a lot of uh, um, conscious uh, to in a uh, uh, Karun Ras. So, thank you. Good, day. Good evening everyone, my name is Rahul Desai and today I will present my presentation on the topic of Rasa in contemporary Indian art and cinema. This is my self-introduction, table of contents. Now let's start with the introduction of Rasa. Uh, Ras is a, an art in our Indian culture and which explores the aesthetic beauty of poetic world. Rasa uh, literally means uh, taste or essence, juice and uh, many more things. Then the theory of Rasa is formulated by uh, Bharat, uh, Bharat Muni and later explicated uh, and enriched by uh, Anandvardhana and Abhinav Gupta. Constitute uh, the central uh, tradition in uh, Indian aesthetic. Rasa is the concept in England, Indian aesthetic that refers to the emotion, emotional uh, flavor or sentiment evoked in the viewer or reader. Uh, the nine Rasas are, as we mentioned earlier, like uh, uh, Sringar, Veer, Asya, Rodra, Vibhatsa, uh, Bhayankara, uh, and Karun, and uh, Shan. Then evol uh, evolution of Rasa in Indian art and uh, cinema like uh, Rasa has a long history in Indian art forms such as classical dance, music, uh, lyrics and uh, also theatre. In contemporary Indian art and cinema, uh, artists have adapted uh, and uh, uh, reinterpreted the concept of Rasa to suit modern sensibility. Uh, sensibilities uh, the exploration of Rasa in a diverse art form reflect the rich culture, helit, uh, cultural heritage and creative innovation in India. Viewers are criticizing the Indian art and cinema as per showing some interest and own convenience. Rasa in visual arts. Uh, we see as a Rasa in visual art like uh, colors, uh, compos uh, compos uh, compositions and symbols evoke rasa in their artwork, some paintings, some artwork, some paintings, some uh, wall paintings and uh, many more things. Through their work, artists aim to create a dialogue with the audience and evoke a range of emotions. Uh, the filmmakers, uh, maker or uh, writers write in uh, like dialogues to evoke uh, some emotions and uh, love for the uh, visual arts. According to the uh, both the Natya Shastra and the uh, Silpat uh, uh, Paratna, the colors of images in paintings are light green for love, white for merriment, gray for comp uh, compassion, red for fury, light, orange for heroic energy, black for terror, yellow for wonder, and blue for rep uh, repulsion. Such is the color expre expressionism in classical Indian paintings. Rasa in Indian cinema. Uh, our Indian cinema are uh, uh, totally based on uh, Rasa. 
Indian filmmakers incorporate rasa through the storytelling, character development, music, and cinema, uh, cinematographic to create immersive cinematic experience. The use of music, uh, uh, we, we can observe or we can see the horror music or uh, any Karun music, uh, we observe the, some, the sense of beauty of rasa. Uh, music and dance in Indian cinema play a significant role in evoking rasa and, and uh, enhancing emotional impact. Indian cinema is completely based on uh, experiencing each rasa. The rasas have a dominant role to play in creating the character in a film. Shringar, uh, Shringar signifies beauty, love, faithfulness or devotion and is always a strong trait, uh, strong trait uh, of the lead female character the pure and innocent heroine, virus which highlights the vehicle, strength, courage, as well as pride, defines the proud and the chivalric hero. Bollywood film is highly dependent on the nine rasas and uh, like uh, some of the example like Puli in uh, um, uh, character of Amitabh Bachchan, Rangde Basanti character of uh, uh, Amir Khan and some uh, slumdog millionaires. Emotions and rasa in contemporary Indian art, we uh, explore the uh, parallel part of, uh, we see the daily uh, daily life in uh, divine by the rasa with the glimpse towards beauty. Now rasa depict the emotions through the praise uh, of art with an unwin Indian perspective and breaks new ground in the visualization of Indian art. art. The artist explores the nine emotions of art, Shringar, Rudra, Vipatsya, uh, Vayanaka, Hasya, Karun, Vir, Adbhuta and Shanta uh, all should clearly appear in the contemporary Indian art. When we see these types of art, uh, at that time we observe that some uh, these are the Ras and uh, uh, we, through the Ras we uh, make some more interest to see more art and more more uh, 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 Indian cinema. Through the use of Rasa, artists aim to engage viewer emotionally and provoke uh, through uh, provoke thought and reflection. Contemporary approaches to Rasa in uh, Indian art, modern artists, artists in Indian experiment with new uh, mediums, uh, use of techniques and uh, themes reinterpret the concept of rasa in their works. Uh, modern Indian philosophers are accept, accepting the ethical values of uh, Ras Siddhanta in contemporary Indian art reflecting ideas, themes, symbolism within a sing, uh, single framework. Uh, very few Indian contemporary painters have used specific form, symbols, uh, colors and uh, Images to create a particular emotion with an aesthetic experience, which is mentioned to as Alankika and excellent. Future trends and challenges in exploring, exploring Rasa. Uh, Rasa is a very interesting and uh, very uh, significant art uh, in our culture. Uh, uh, Indian art and cinema, it, in its uh, contribution, country events. To give the audience the pleasure of the spectacle reliance uh, on the formulaic use of dance and music. The globalization of Indian art and cinema presents new opportunities and the challenges in uh, representing Rasa in multicultural context. Indian cinema for decades use of character colored in board stock who uh, exhibit strong emotions because according to the Natya Shastra formula a perfect convenience of emotion rather than uh, rather than uh, perfection in characterization. This uh, argued by uh, Alisha Ipkar in his uh, article. In conclusion, we see the exploration, uh, exploration of Rasa in contemporary Indian art and uh, cinema relieves a deep connection between emotion, uh, culture and storytelling. Storytelling by film creators and uh, uh, writers and uh, many more poets uh, like that. Through the nonsense, uh, nonsense uh, portraits of emotion like uh, love, anger, joy and sorrow, 
artists and filmmakers continue to evoke profound experience and uh, reflection on life. It's uh, totally connected with the life and the uh, interest of the life. Now these are the, my uh, citations, uh, references of these people. I don't think if you have any question, you can ask. My question to you, can you give an example of a film or artwork that affect effectively portrays Russia? Yes, Koshi. Uh, I can give uh, one of the example like uh, film Lagan. In in this uh, uh, film, uh, we uh, clearly observe the uh, leadership quality, heroism, and uh, pessimism, and uh, romance, love, and many more things. So my question to you is, according to you, how do contemporary Indian artists incorporate personal experiences into their artworks? Yes, for me, uh, the contemporary Indian artist uh, uh, drives through the uh, personal experience, uh, uh, drives uh, through the some realities, and uh, he creates uh, something new uh, thoughts and arts. Uh, to create something uh, uh, drive by rasas like uh, love, uh, the rodra and uh, many uh, contemporary artists like uh, depend on the uh, reality and uh, creative uh, thinking about the uh, what doing uh, what doing and what create to thought about ideas and uh, in uh, based on reality. Thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, I am Yesra Soda and uh, today I am going to dis uh, discuss about the topic Comparative Analysis of Nati Sastra and uh, Aristotle's uh, Poetics, Exploring Differences and uh, Commonalities. Okay. Uh, personal Information, Table of Content. Uh, first of all, the Nati Sastra. Nati Sastra is a handbook on the classical Sanskrit theatre attributed to, uh, to Bharata, a mythical Brahman sage. Encompasses uh, the diverse arts, dance, music, poetic, and aesthetics. It uh, dwells into the different uh, art forms like da dance, music, and aesthetics. Uh, authored between 1st century BC and 3rd uh, century CE, highlights uh, Indian drama as a means of uh, spiritual enlightenment and justification. The information is taken from uh, Britannica. Uh, now, the poetics. Uh, written by uh, Aristotle. Uh, the Poetics is a book of drama and poetry. Uh, influence uh, on the criticism, uh, poetic has the profound impact on the literary theory and criticism throughout the history. Uh, legacy, the enduring relevance of the poetics lies in, uh, in its exploration of the nature and purpose of literature shaping subsequent generation of writers and critics. Uh, the same uh, information taken from uh, Britannica. Now the key concept uh, in the Natya Sastra, what are the main uh, themes or things we find in the Natya Sastra? Uh, first of all, the Patya or we can say the text, the written uh, things that is there. Second is the Geet, the, uh, uh, we can say the tune or uh, the way it is going to be performed, the tune. The Abhinaya, uh, the presentation, uh, how the, uh, the actors or characters are going to portray that uh, through the their Abhinay presentation, 
uh, rasa the aesthetic pleasure the main thing the that is uh, going to uh, happen into the viewers as well as in the performance the main rasa uh well known the uh, aphoristic phrase that conceptualizes the rasa vibhav anubhav vyabhichar bhav samyogad rasa nispati uh, it means that rasa is pro uh, produced from the combination of uh, determinants uh, consequents and uh, transitory states when the these type of uh, things are uh, performed or being played on a stage then ras then the uh, phrase the phrase can be uh, felt by the audience uh, the parents book uh, that is taken from a uh, key concept in aristotle's poetics uh, first of all the Arist aristotle definition of tragedy uh, is given and in the tragedy the main part that is imitation that uh, imitation means whatever the content the writer is taking it is originally from the uh, real world so the, it is the imitation of action as we know the language uh, how it is used and how it is performed how it is played uh, how it is written the language how it is used a uh, presentation as we have seen in the uh, Barrett's theory also how it is going to be presented on the stage there we find then the catharsis the term catharsis meaning the cleansing or the purgation of the emotion and pity uh, the fear while defini uh, defining the uh, tragedy the we can also compare it uh, with the aesthetic pleasure or the rasnispati that happens uh, inside the human psyche that is also called the catharsis, the human experience, the uh, 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 emotional uh, pleasure we find. Uh, that is uh, from the Aristotle. Uh, now, similarities uh, between Nati Sastra and Aristotle's poetics. So what types of similarities we find? Uh, both works delve in, uh, well into the drama and literary theory. Both works uh, talks about the theory uh, of the plays or drama, how it is performed, how it is written and uh, that type of nature elements and principle of drama uh, both follow the similar framework addressing the drama's constituents uh, like Aristotle discussed the imitation language and presentation and catharsis while Bharatas mentions the Patya, Geet, Abhinav and Rasa as we have discussed before both aim to enhance the pleasure and enjoyment literary, uh, in literary works uh, like uh, the theory of catharsis and Rasnispati we can find uh, another similarity is both recognize the emotions importance in the representation of the literature like Aristotle emphasized the pity and the fear, the emotion of pity and fear while Bharata outlined the Sai Bhavas and their manifestations, Sai Bhava, that is Sai Bhava and Sanchari Bhava, the Rasas that we have, emotional emotions. Both address the relationship between the work performer and the audience, the, both of the works we find there are like uh, different uh, theories is applied like uh, Aristotle discusses the treasury impact through the catharsis and Bharata we find the explores actor's role in conveying the rasas to spectators. Uh, these uh, similarities are uh, taken from uh, uh, one article uh, written by Mrs. Nirmala Sarma. The article name is Catharsis and Rasa the Intersecting Theories. Now the differences, what types of differences we find in the Natya Sastra and uh, Perhaps Nati Sastra and Aristotle's poetics. The language and con uh, cultural context, as we know, the uh, 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 Aristotle is belong to the Greek, and this Nati Sastra is written in Sanskrit uh, Indian context. Time period uh, we find the Nati Sastra dated between fifth century BC and uh, fourth century C in between that period, not particular time. While the poetics uh, is believed to be written between uh, three thirty five to uh, 322 uh, BC. Emotional range we find that Aristotle focusing on the evocation of pity and fear in tragedy while Bharata outlines the eight principle of emotions, Thai Bhavas in their manifestation. That we find, we can uh, find the similar context and difference also that uh, how they portray both, both the things. Concept of uh, catharsis and Rasa. The concept is same but they are, what they are saying is different like in Aristotle catharsis involves the pulgeration and specific emotion while the Bharata's Ras um, uh, encompasses the broader range of aesthetic experiences. Like uh, the Rasas are taken from the different Rasas, like we taste this, we can find. So that is also the, the wider concept we find. Uh, theoretic uh, radical approach, like Aristotle approach is more analytic, uh, analytical and perspective based, while Bharata's Ras theory is more comprehensive 
and inclusive that is uh, include more things out outside of the drama or uh, it also include the uh, the seers the viewers role of audience and spectator both in both the ways like oristol discusses the impact of tragedy on the audience through the catharsis while bharat explores the role of spectator in experiences rasa through the actors portrayal how actors is being uh, actors are uh, performing their art uh, Character and then we got the rest is pretty. Cultural context we find that Aristotle poetics is influenced by the Greek philosophy and literary tradition, while Nandi Sastra adopts the Indian philosophical and aesthetic principle and also the Sanskrit literature in the context of we find that. Uh, this is also taken from the same uh, uh, article I have mentioned. In the conclusion, we find the comparative analysis of Nandi Sastra and Aristotle poetics. reveals that the rich diversity in literary tradition alongside the universality uh, of certain aesthetic principle uh, some of the similarities we find that uh, it is in the greek philosophy is also there in sanskrit so that is beyond the boundaries that like different from the greek my mythology greek uh, uh, philosophy we find in indian context we also find despite the originating from the dis, uh, distinct context both works share the fundamental concern for which exploring the nature and purposes of literature how literature or drama is uh, very good or uh, that helps us to uh, do the emotional that supposed the emotional uh, part of our that is also discussed in the both of the books while differences in approach highlight the unique cultural perspective this discussion foster the deeper understanding of literary theory and encourages global dialogues that celebrate diversity and collective wisdom and pursuit of artistic excellence as we have Uh, seen that many of the uh, 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 presenters also included uh, indian applied indian theories and uh, western uh, uh, this uh, artistic work and uh, some of them we can also apply the uh, greek or uh, sorry uh, aristotle poetics in our indian context so it uh, uh, we can uh, learn deeply the literature so that is provide the big way to uh, learn in the literature Uh, uh, I have taken the help of Cloud AI to organize the content. Uh, several in the different slides and conclusion too. Uh, These uh, uh, slides I have taken from slides too. Uh, thank you. That is from my side. Now we can ask uh, questions. So, Yashraj, my question is: Do you think Aristotelian poetics could have shared ideas at that time, or did both writers develop their ideas independently? Uh, now, as we have discussed, like the, there are uh, several similarities in both of the works. They talk about the emotional state and resas and catharsis. So somehow we feel that uh, is there any connection between the two of the writers? There, so they are giving so much similar philosophies. but uh, in the article also stated or we know that at that time during the uh, like 300 bc there was no connection between the greek mythology or uh, sorry greek uh, philosophy or indian uh, this uh, philosophies or like uh, literature so they are like both of the common but uh, we can also connect that with the as we were discussing in the class like spiritus mundi that is like uh, the concept of yes like whatever feel we have feel uh, feel through the this many years we have that experience and we are getting that idea so we may connect with that and uh, during that time that was no connection so they might be uh, write this auth authentically on it Yes, my question is: How do Natya Shastra and Aristotle's poetics contribute to our understanding of the universal principles underlying the creation and appreciation of dramatic art? Yes. Uh, like the, both of the theories, uh, like in Indian context, we find that uh, Bharat is talking about, or any other uh, like theories, is talking about how we feel, how the Rajnispati is happening. so we can also critically analyze that what is the that any element that uh, uh, make make us feel that emotion so that is also provide the deeper understanding of like uh, in the aristotle thing we find that how catharsis is happening 
how do we connect with the hero or the main character from the uh, any uh, particular art and when something wrong happened to them we also felt the same way in the movies nowadays we also felt the same so this type of theories uh, gives the like psychoanalytical uh, analysis of our psyche that how we feel that and how art uh, can help us to uh, feel our emotion how to uh, take our emotion uh, outside and uh, that also uh, give the critical analysis to how to produce the literature what type of elements should be there in the literary arts uh, in the drama or any other uh, literary piece that can produce more uh, uh, rasas or catharsis or emotion uh, in the uh, in the readers or in the viewers uh, so uh, thank you for listening Hello everyone, myself Asha Rakhar. I'm going to present about the topic Carl Jung's the theory of architects. Uh, these are my personal information. The table of content, uh, we are going to discuss about it. So, what are architects? According to Jung, architects are inherited. Or potentials that are uh, actually uh, actualized when they enter uh, consciousness as an image or a manifest in behavior on uh, interaction with the outside world. In literary criticism, the term archetype denotes a narrative designs pattern of uh, action, character types, themes, and image, uh, which uh, recur in a wide variety of works of literature as well as in myths dreams and even social rituals such recurrent items are often claimed to be the result of uh, elements and uh, universal pattern in the human psyche whose uh, effective embodiment in a literary work evokes a profound response from the attentive readers because he or she shares the psychic uh, uh, archetypes ex expressed by the author. Archetypes in literature. Archetypes literary criticism is a type of analytical theory that uh, interprets a text by focusing on uh, recurring myths and archetypes uh, in the narrative, symbols, images, and character types in uh, literary work as an acknowledged uh, form of uh, literary criticism. It dates back to 1934 when classical scholar Maud Borkin published a uh, archetypal pattern in poetry. Borkin was the first who applied Jung's theory about the collective unconscious archetype and uh, primordial image to literature, but not surprise the uh, purely theorized archetypal criticism in literary terms. For Christ, literary archetype plays an essential role in uh, uh, refashioning the material universe into the alternative verbal universe that is uh, hardly in, ineligible and uh, uh, viable uh, because it is adapted to essential human needs and wants. While the phrases were the deal with uh, mythology and architects in material terms, the work of Carl Gustav Jung, the Swiss born founder of uh, analytic uh, psychological, is in uh, contrast uh, in its focus. Jung's work theorized about myths and architects in uh, relation, uh, relation to the uh, unconscious and uh, inaccessible uh, part of the mind. From, uh, Jungian uh, perspective, myths are the cul culturally elaborated representable of the uh, context of the deepest recess of uh, the human psyche, the world of the stream. Yeah. Then, uh, origin of uh, Jungian archetypes. Jung believed that archetypes come from the collective unconscious. He suggested that these models are innate, universal, unlearned 
learn and uh, uh, hereditary archetypes uh, organize how we experience certain things. All the most powerful ideas in uh, history go back to archetypes. Jung explained in his book, uh, The Structure of the Psyche, uh, Jung believed that each archetype played a role in personally, but felt that most people were uh, dominated by one specific archetype. According to Jung, the actual way in which an archetype is uh, expressed or realized depends upon a number of factors, including an individual's cultural influence and a unique uh, personal experience. Then Jung's measure for archetype. While Jung agreed with thought that uh, the unconscious played an in, uh, important role in uh, personality and behavior, he explained uh, on a first idea of the personal uh, un uh, unconscious to include what Jung called the collective unconscious. Jung believed that the human psyche was composed of uh, the three comp uh, components. First, the uh, ego that reflect in the conscious mind. Second, uh, personal uh, unconscious, which is uh, unique to each of us. Uh, it contains sub suppressed memories. Then, a collective unconscious that reflects shared memory with the whole of humanity. According to you, the ego represents uh, the conscious mind, while the personal unconscious content uh, memory, including those that have been suppressed archetypes. Uh, the main archetype by you, the persona, second, the shadow, third one, anima or animals, and fourth, the self. First, persona. Persona is how we present ourselves to the world. The word persona is derived from a Latin word that literally means a mask. Uh, the persona represents all of the different social masks that we wear among various groups and situations. It acts to share the ego from negative images. According to you, the persona may appear in dreams, take a different form, forms. The persona archetype allow people to adapt to the world around them and fit in with the society which, which they like. However, becoming too closely identified with this archetype can lead people to uh, lose sight of uh, their true self. Uh, this archetype uh, uh, I have taken by uh, Kendra's Cherish uh, article. The shadow, the shadow is a Jungian archetype that consists of sex and life uh, intakes. Uh, the shadow exists as a part of the unconscious mind and uh, is a composed of uh, repressed ideas, weakness, desire, uh, instincts, and shortcomings. Jung uh, suggested the shadow can appear in dreams uh, as well as uh, uh, a person. A vision on uh, may uh, take a variety of uh, forms. It might appear uh, as a snake, a monster, a demon, a dragon, or some other dark, wild, or sceptic uh, figure. This archetype is often described as the darker side of the psyche, representing uh, wildness, chaos, and the unknown. Uh, these latent uh, dispositions are present in all of us. Jung believe although people sometimes deny this element of their own psyche and instead project uh, in uh, it in onto others. Third one is the anima or animal. The anima is a feminine image in the male psyche and the animal is a male image in the female psyche. The anima or the animals represent the true self rather than the image we present to others and serve as the uh, primary source of communication with the collective unconscious. Uh, you believe that the psychological changes as well as the social influence contribute to the development of sex goals and gender identity. The combined anima and uh, animals is known as the sagi. Or the divine couple, the Sage Gigi, uh, represent the com completions, uh, 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 fictions, and allness. The fourth, the self. Self the, is an archetype that represents the uh, uh, unified uh, unconscious and uh, consciousness of an individual. Jung often represents the self as a circle, square, and mandala. Uh, 
uh, Jung uh, believed that uh, this harmony between the unconscious and the conscious mind would lead to psychological problem. You can think of this uh, by image, image in a circle with uh, lot, uh, dot of light at the center. The entire circle makes up the self and then the small dot in the middle represents the ego. Conclusion, an architect in the uh, collective unconscious as a word from uh, leads is a, a is representable but has effect which uh, make a visualization of it po po uh, possible namely and the architect image and ideas in short Jung uh, conceptualized our psyche as a place that many architects and personalities, personalities uh, are being short stored many uh, psychoanalysis Jung uh, regard that the psyche as a huge uh, collection of partly integrated personalities. This is my reference. Thank you. So, Asha, my question is, can you explain the significance of the persona archetype in shaping social uh, interactions and personal identity? Yes. Persona is uh, like a mask. We wear it in different uh, situations and uh, uh, we manage to how others see us and uh, it's uh, shaping what? Uh, social interaction and uh, uh, Asa, my question is, in your view, uh, how does Carl Jung's theory contribute to our compre uh, comprehension of literature? Uh, in my point of view, I use uh, uh, can see in uh, literature uh, that uh, that th throughout the uh, we can uh, see and uh, many of themes, uh, symbols, and uh, uh, characters. Uh, it's represent uh, that. Uh, 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 universal hum uh, human experience and uh, psychological uh, psychological dynamics. A very good evening to everyone. Today I am going to deal with the uh, anatomy of criticism by North of Fry. This is my personal information. And these are the points which I discussed today. Introduction of author, North of Fry. Introduction of essay and overview of anatomy of criticism. And these are the sub points and the conclusion. First one is the introduction of author. North of Fry was born on uh, July 5th, uh, 40, 15 in 1920 and uh, died in uh, Toronto. He is regarded as the one of the most influential figures in literary criticism of the uh, 20th century. And uh, he taught as the University of Toronto and he became uh, the University Professor of English uh, Emeritus. Notable works by the North of Fry. 
first one is the educated imagination published in 1964 the educated image, imagination the book uh, explored the idea of uh, the influence of uh, imagination and um, uh, education of the society the uh, second one is the uh, the great code it is very interesting work or a book by the uh, fry in which uh, uh, fry uh, explored the idea of that how the bible influence on the uh, society or uh, literature uh, third one is the fearful symmetry the in published in uh, 1947 fearful symmetry which was uh, the phrase ori originally originated from the william uh, blake uh, uh, work or the uh, the book fearful symmetry which was uh, written by fry to to the um, uh, william blake or in which uh, he portrayed the idea of uh, the art or uh, the idea of uh, poetry which was written by william blake uh, fourth was uh, words with power published in 1990 the words with power is uh, the book explored the idea of uh, how the power of language uh, impact on the um, uh, shaping the human uh, uh, culture, society, or thoughts. Uh, North of Fry received the numerous award and honors during his uh, life, including the Governor General's Award for Nonfiction and the Another one is Order of Canada. He published uh, the Anatomy of Criticism in 1950. It was a very famous work, and uh, the, he was leading figure of 19th century. 20th century he was passed away in 1991 and uh, living behind as a lasting legacy in the literary criticism and cultural studies now the introduction of essay the essay anatomy of criticism uh, anatomy means to study the structure the study of the scientific structure of anything and here I, the anatomy of criticism means the study of uh, criticism and uh, how the north of fry reflect here the idea of uh, to study the structure with a different survey and, uh, with, uh, he, and that's why he was considered as author of uh, most important work anatomy of criticism in his the introduction try generally considered the authors of most important importance work and uh, the, no, anatomy of criticism and um, the essay which was uh, divided into four four uh, essay and addressed as the modes uh, as uh, symbols myths and uh, genres uh, how the this work four are corresponding with the, the uh, historical uh, and ethical, archetypal and rhetorical dimension of uh, literary expression. Now the uh, overview of uh, anatomy of criticism, the essay. The essay begins with the polemical introduction. Polemical introduction, which was suggest that uh, something uh, particular or the um, uh, uh, attending towards the something a particular opinion. Uh, it's called the polemical introduction and how North of Fry uh, attend to the um, as a uh, idea of criticism or how he reflect the idea of criticism. In his the polemical introduction, Fry reject a prevailing way uh, of defining the critical project and the, as uh, and uh, he was uh, mentioned that uh, the goal of criticism he says uh, should not be can, canon making or a political but rather a properly elaborated science of a whole body of literature and uh, that's why the title of anatomy of criticism to study the criticism and uh, criti and he further said that uh, criticism rather is uh, to art what history is to action and philosophy philosophy to wisdom a verbal imitation of human productive power which is itself does not speak and further he said that and just as uh, there is uh, nothing which the philosopher cannot consider philosophically and nothing which can a historian who consider as a historical so the critic should be able to construct an daily uh, conceptual universe of his own and uh, in the essay there, uh, which, uh, in which we find the types of criticism and how the is uh, corresponding with uh, other literary theory the four, four, four types uh, he explored that historical criticism, ethical, ethical criticism, archetypal criticism, or rhetorical criticism. Now, here the how the this uh, four kind of criticism uh, to corresponding with the literature and literary theory. The first one is the historical criticism, how correspond with the theory of modes, 
eth ethical criticism, how the correspond with the, with the theory of symbols, and archetypal criticism, how the corresponds with theory of myths, and the rhetorical criticism, how corresponds with the genres. The first one is historical criticism, the theory of modes, how the both are corresponding with each other, and how North of Price uh, depicts idea here that prior, prior start with the modes. Uh, in historical criticism, the first is the amour, referred to a power of power or action of character. In the work of literature, uh, Fry argues that there are principally five modes. First one is mythic, the second one is romantic, high, high mimetic, low mimetic, and ironic. Mimetic, uh, which uh, reflect the character of God or uh, divine power, and uh, the romantic, which was reflect the hero or king or the protagonist of our story. High mimetic, which uh, reflect, reflect the king or the leader of the end story, and low mimetic, which reflect the person or the normal person of the story or work. Ironic, which reflect the person which was uh, also known uh, in uh, the work or uh, in the any kind of uh, literary work. The second one is eth ethical criticism, theory of symbols. The second essay, the, the fry looks the symbol. And he considered different aspects of, of the symbol and can, how can differ in the relation that symbol has something else also. And he referred that in your motif, uh, the symbol of uh, uh, refer to the uh, in, uh, in the motif how the try reflect as the work uh, to the symbol in the sign uh, reflects something outside of the work. In the image uh, refers something the uh, peculiar, uh, particular uh, Im uh, imagination or uh, emotions in the image or symbol of image. In the archetype, uh, as we know that uh, they will reflect the various idea of uh, another, another thing. And uh, Monad, in uh, which uh, reflect that uh, uh, other uh, themes of uh, literature. In the third one is uh, third essay is called archetypal criticism and how the, the archetypal criticism uh, according to Fry uh, corresponding with the theory of myths. In the third essay is about myths, uh, which are groupism of symbols. Sometimes the image uh, recur together in master of lords uh, like a god with uh, evil. But uh, the north of uh, Fry. Uh, in, uh, particularly interested in pattern that uh, recurs across uh, different groups of images, which is uh, division of uh, imagery into four phases that are like uh, like a uh, four uh, season. And uh, here, uh, yeah, it's a birth of a spring or to the death of winter. And uh, I argue that uh, these uh, four phases correspond to with the four mythio or uh, primary categories of literature, like, as we know the how the romance uh, uh, corresponding in the summer or the comedy with the spring, tragedy with the autumn, or satire with the winter. Fourth, uh, fourth essay is rhetorical criticism and how the rhetorical criticism to correspond with the theory of the literature, the theory of genre. The fourth essay, Fry turns in attention to genre and he defines as the primary form in which a work of literature is uh, presented. It is important, as uh, according to Fry, it is important that uh, how in the word form the work are presented. There are, according to Fry, there is uh, four main genres. First one is a drama. Uh, how the drama, which was uh, performed on the stage, or the best example is consider in the uh, drama is the Hamlet, by Shakespeare. Epos, uh, epos means uh, means uh, to uh, the um, uh, a poet or the poet who has uh, spoken something, or the other side the audience who has uh, listened in the epos uh, with the um, uh, best example of uh, Greek literature, uh, the Homer's Odyssey, Iliad Odyssey. Or the fiction, as uh, in the modern literature, uh, there is uh, we find the uh, various kind of uh, fiction writing in the novels or other forms. In the lyrics, uh, lyrics means uh, which which uh, depicts or with uh, or refer to the uh, one individual person to the on, on another individual person, and uh, which uh, we find the best example of Wuthering uh, um, Heights. Now the conclusion. In conclusion, North of Fry's the anatomy of criticism stands as a monumental achievement to the field of literary theory and offering comprehensive framework to understanding and analyzing literature.
throughout the escape, try challenges and uh, traditional approach to the criticism and emphasizing that anatomy of criticism from art and the necessity of system, systematic and comprehensive approach. These are my references. Now, anyone have a question regarding? Uh, Nidia, my question is, according to you, how does the, uh, the work Anatomy of uh, Criticism enhance our uh, understanding of literature? Okay, uh, according to me, the uh, Anatomy of Criticism surely enhances our, our comprehensive our understanding of literature through the deep understanding of uh, uh, symbols or elements like character, symbol, uh, symbol or uh, use of uh, psychological uh, dynamics or uh, overall the, it's the help to uh, how or the main idea or what uh, the main idea design in the work it helps according to now anyone else my question is that can you provide example of literary work that have been analyzed and using anatomic criticism principles? Okay, uh, the various work uh, which uh, use the uh, principle anatomy of criticism, uh, like the uh, uh, best one example is uh, William Shakespeare Hamlet, and uh, second one is Putring uh, uh, Emily Bronte, and uh, Third one is uh, Paradise Lost by John Minton. These are the examples which uh, consider as the use of uh, anatomy of criticism as uh, in the, uh, the work. Okay, thank you. So very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, today I'm going to deal with the topic, the archetypes in literature. This is my personal information. Uh, this is my table of content I'm going to deal with. Uh, we'll begin with the introduction to archetypes. Archetypes are recurring symbols, themes or patterns that appear in literature, mythology and folklore across different cultures and time periods this house, uh, this house has universal uh, representation of human experiences, emotions, and values, and resonate with readers on a deep psychological level. A definition of uh, archetype. Uh, archetype is a term uh, which is coined from Greek uh, archetypos. In literary uh, criticism, a primordial image, character, or pattern of cir uh, circumstances that recurs throughout literature and thought consistently enough to be considered a universal concept or situation. Now, what is uh, an archetype? The phrase uh, archetype was uh, first introduced by 
Swiss psychologist named uh, Carl Gustav Jung. Uh, Jung proposed that archetypes constituted a component of the collective unconscious uh, communal repository of human experiences, symbols, and patterns that extend beyond personal uh, consciousness. Archetypes are deeply ingrained in a collective psyche, and their presence in literature helps create a sense of uh, familiarity and connection for readers. As a literary device, uh, archetypes can be found in characters, setting, themes, uh, and symbols. Uh, they serve to evoke uh, universal emotions and experiences, allowing readers to relate to the text on a deeper level. By tapping into the collective unconscious, uh, archetypes add depth and resonate uh, to literary works, making them more uh, engaging and memorable. Uh, now, types of archetypes. There are numerous, uh, there are numerous uh, archetypes in literature which can be broadly categorized into the uh, following types. First, uh, the character uh, archetypes. Uh, this uh, are uh, recurring character types that uh, represent uh, universal aspects of human nature and experience. Uh, character archetypes often uh, embody the specific values, traits, or roles and serve to, the exp uh, to express the human condition in a relatable and recognizable manner. Second, situational archetypes. Uh, these are common uh, situations or plot structures that recur uh, throughout literature, often reflecting uh, universal themes and con conflicts. So situational archetypes uh, can help the reader to understand the underlying message or the moral of the story and create a sense of uh, familiarity and resonance. Third, symbolic archetypes. These are uh, recurring symbols or motifs that carry uh, universal meanings and associations. Uh, symbolic uh, archetypes helps to convey the abstract uh, concepts and ideas in a more uh, tangible and accessible form, allowing readers to connect with the text on a deeper level. Fourth, uh, thematic uh, archetypes. Uh, these are recurring themes or uh, ideas that address the universal aspects of the human experience, such as love, death, or the struggle between good and evil. So thematic archetypes serves to express and explore the complexities of life, prompting readers to engage in reflection and contemplation. Uh, now, examples of archetypes in literature. There are four types of uh, literary, uh, this, uh, archetypes in literature. First, uh, character archetypes example. The hero. The hero is a central figure in many uh, literary works, often embarking on a quest or facing a series of challenges to achieve a goal or save the day. Example of uh, archetypes, character archetypes, uh, Odysseus from Homer's The Odyssey, Harry Potter from J.K. Rowling, uh, Harry Potter series, and Katniss Everdeen from Suzanne Collins' The Hunger Games. Second, the mentor. The mentor is a wise and uh, experienced guide who helps the uh, hero on their journey, providing advice, support, and sometimes magical assistance. Examples of the mentor uh, archetype. Uh, Gandalf from J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings, Obi-Wan Kenobi from the Star Wars series, and Albus Dumbledore from the Harry Potter series. Next, the trickster. The trickster is a crafty and a sly character who em employs their intellect to mislead, uh, control, or outwit others. Tricksters can act as a catalyst for change or contest established customs. And they may have uh, either uh, positive or negative consequences. Examples of uh, trickster archetype Loki from Norse my mythology, Puck from William Shakespeare's uh, Midsummer Night's Dream and Tyler Durden from Chuck Palunic Fight Club. Uh, next, the outcast. The outcast uh, is a character who is rejected or marginalized by society often uh, due to their unconventional beliefs, action, or appearance. Outcast can serve as a critic of societal norms and ex expectations and can also represent the struggle for acceptance and belonging. Examples of outca uh, outcast archetype. Hester Pyrene from Nathaniel Howard, 
Hawthorne's The Scarlet Letter, Jean Valjean from Victor Hugo's Less Miserables, and in the novel uh, uh, Frankenstein, the or uh, the modern Prometheus by uh, Mary Shelley. Uh, in this, uh, Frankenstein uh, was a Geneva student of uh, natural philosophy who discovered the secret of uh, giving life to inanimate matter. So the unnamed monster, uh, uh, which he, which he created eventually, he killed him. So correctly, uh, then uh, Frankenstein is one of who one who destroyed his uh, own creation. Though uh, today it is the a monster who is uh, usually and uh, erroneously called Frankenstein. A second, a situational archetypes example. The fall. The fall is an archetype that uh, involves a, a character's descent from a higher to a lower state, often uh, due to a moral or ethical failing. So this archetype can serve as a cautionary tale or a commentary on the nature of humanity. Examples, Adam and Eve's uh, expulsion from the Garden of Eden in the Bible, the downfall of Macbeth in William Shakespeare's Macbeth, and the tragic uh, trajectory of J. Gatsby in uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby. The battle between good and evil. This situational archetype involves a struggle between opposing forces of good and evil, often with high stakes and dramatic consequences. Example can be found in the J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings, C.S. Lewis, The Chronicles of Narnia, and George Orwell's The Novel 1984. Third, symbolic archetypes example. Water. Water is a versatile symbol that can represent life, renewal, and purification, as well as chaos, destruction, and the unconscious. Examples of water uh, symbolism are found in the, uh, the biblical story of Neoth are several uh, Taylor Coleridge, the rhyme of the ancient mariner poem, uh, T.S. Eliot's poem, The Western End, and the tree. The tree is a common symbol uh, in literature that can represent growth, stability, and the interconnectedness of life. Examples of uh, tree symbolism, the tree of knowledge in the Bible, the world tree in Norse mythology, and the Symbolic tree in shell, silver stains, the giving tree. Fourth, the thematic uh, archetypes example. The hero's journey. The hero's journey is a thematic uh, archetype that uh, outlines a series of stages and experiences that a hero must undergo to uh, achieve their goal or complete their transformation. Popularized by Joseph Campbell, the hero with a thousand faces. The hero's journey can be found in literature like uh, G.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings, J.K. Uh, Rowling's Harry Potter series, and Homer's The Odyssey. Uh, love and Sacrifice uh, Love and Sacrifice is a recurring theme in literature that dwells into the intricacies of human connections and the readiness of people to re relinquish something precious for the sake of affection. Example includes like the self, uh, selfless acts of Sydney Cartoon in Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities, uh, the sacrifice made by Romeo and Juliet in William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, and the devotion of Eponine in Victor Hugo's Less Miserables. Uh, conclusion, uh, the archetypes in literature uh, serves as a timeless and a universal pattern that recur uh, throughout literary works. Uh, providing readers with uh, recognizable characters, symbols, and themes. So through the exploration of archetypes like the hero, villain, mentor, the trickster, literature reflects fundamental aspects of the human experience and offers insight into our collective uh, consciousness. So by understanding and analyzing this uh, archetypes, readers can gain a deeper appreciation for the reach tapestry of uh, storytelling and the enduring power of literature to uh, resonate across uh, cultures and generations. This is my references. Thank you. If anybody is having questions, feel free to ask. Krishna, my question is that how do characters like Scarlet O'Hara from Born with the Wind or J. Get People? From the great great exemplified the lower archetype in literature. Uh, so the the character in uh, both the novels, uh, Gone with the Wind, 
in that the character Scarlet O'Hara and uh, in the novel this uh, the Great Gatsby by uh, Fitzgerald in uh, this both uh, character are uh, uh, example of the uh, uh, lower archetype in literature where they both uh, they both are uh, taking like uh, they both are uh, having desires for uh, for loving uh, the for loving so they they uh, they, are, they becomes how they become ready to take risk and uh, and, then, and then we get the uh, 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 consequences of uh, warning us that uh, uh, which puts us in a consumed uh, Consume consequences of uh, we should not uh, love somebody. Next. This, my question is that uh, can archetypes evolve or, or change uh, over time, reflecting shift in societal values and norms? Yes, Divya. Uh, yes, archetypes uh, can evolve uh, and change over the time. And uh, they reflect a uh, shift in social values, and uh, they are being influenced by the uh, cultural dynamics. Thank you. Okay, so first of all, good, very good evening to all of you uh, on the very fourth day of our presentation seminar. On 9th of April, I'm going to present Anti-Hero Archetype Throughout the Ages in Literature and in Cinema. Yes, this is these are my academic information. Yes, what is archetypal criticism? First of all, as Reshma previously already mentioned, but the, uh, the archetype is from Greek... Uh, archetypes original pattern yes in literary criticism uh, primordial image character or a uh, pattern if circumstances that uh, records uh, throughout the literature and uh, through uh, consistently uh, in enough to be considered um, universal concept of or situation uh, it the term was uh, adopted and uh, popularized by literary critic uh, from the writing of the psychologist Carl Jung, uh, who formulated a theory of collective consciousness uh, for Jung. The um, varieded, varieties of human experience have somehow been uh, ge uh, gent uh, genetically uh, coded and uh, transferred to successive generation this uh, primordial image pattern and situations evoke uh, a startling, a startlingly similar feelings in both reader and the author uh, the Canadian literary critic uh, and the theorist Northrop Frye was influenced in uh, the extending the use of the term archetype to uh, speci uh, specifically a literary context, archetypal criticism has been connected with other group of thinkers more closely uh, allied, allied uh, to its uh, Jungian roots, uh, including uh, Maud Bookin and James Hillman. Yes, this I have taken from Britannica. Now, uh, introduction of writer, yes, Northrop Frye, also known as uh, uh, Herman Northrop Frye, yes, born in uh, 14th of July, 1912, yes, in uh, Canada, died on 23rd of July, 1991, age of uh, 78, Tornado, Canada. Notable works are uh, Anatomy of Criticism, uh, four essays, as Divya already mentioned, yes, fearful, uh, cemetery, a study of uh, William Blake, 
and uh, subject of study is literary criticism and john milton i have taken from britannica yes anti-hero the characteristic what is the characteristic what are the characteristic we find in anti-hero yes uh, so uh, in this is yes uh, he is self-confident yes uh, cowardly yes selfish cruel and rebellion uh, also anti-heroes are uh, uh, this kind of characteristic we find that ambiguity and uh, anomaly yes uh, deception of mischief yes uh, shape shifting yes uh, and irrelevance uh, and uh, um, parody uh, also crossing boundaries that we find appetite and libido uh, uh, antagonism uh, towards the authority and institution yes uh, this origin of anti-hero in classical literature that we find the root of the anti-hero can be traced back uh, to ancient greek and roman literature characters like um, prometheus and uh, media yes and uh, also in a way it was embodied complex morality ambiguous traits that challenged uh, uh, traditional heroic archetypes yes this uh, clear uh, this year early early anti-heroes often struggled against the gods or fact yes uh, reflecting the human condition in all its uh, flawed glory just remember this point, uh, this origin of anti-hero when we find in classical literature, they are fighting against the God or fate or uh, they are fighting for human and for human condition. Yes, classical epics like Iliad and Odyssey, the hero uh, uh, Achilles uh, and Odysseus uh, display uh, both uh, virtuous and selfish uh, qualities, uh, setting the stage you know, for the deeply conflicted protagonists of uh, later eras. Yes, this I have taken from uh, Swift articles. Yes, anti-hero and Shakespearean tragedy. Uh, now we can uh, we are moving towards Shakespearean tragedy. So Shakespeare, uh, Shakespeare's uh, renowned tragedies often feature complex anti-heroes who defy traditional uh, heroic archetypes figures like hamlet macbeth and othello grapple with uh, normal ambiguity yes personal flaws and um, innate uh, desire for power for ultimately leads their downfall these shakespearean uh, anti-heroes embody the tension between the individual's ambition and the societal force that uh, portrays Contrain them, yes, making for the captivating and uh, psychologically profound dramas that uh, have uh, endured for centuries. This I have taken from Neely's article. Also, Neely's article talks about the Shakespearean anti hero that they are in a way madly, yes, they are uh, mad towards their ambition. As uh, if we talk about this Macbeth thing. Well, yes, and then Macbeth and Lady Macbeth that we find constantly uh, having uh, their ambition towards the authority, right? They want to be a uh, king, yes, and uh, not in a way anti hero, always a male character. Also, we can find that anti hero are sometimes um, female, also. Yes, these are the Shakespearean tragedy anti hero. Yes, uh, in classical hero that we find the points like they are fighting against the god, right? They are uh, uh, fighting with the god and the spiritual uh, uh, aspects um, uh, for the human condition. In uh, the time span, uh, by the time uh, we have now Shakespearean tragedy and Shakespearean anti-hero that we find they are fighting for themselves, for their uh, ambition, right? The change. Uh, the rise of anti-hero in 19th century uh, fiction, the romantic anti-hero in 19th century literature, the broody, melancholic anti-hero emerged as a reaction against the uh, various protagonists of previous eras. Figures like Byron's uh, uh, child, Harold and Harold and uh, both his uh, where there's embodied the alienation and existential uh, uh, angst of the romantic moment yes 
दोस्तों विस्की इज अनकन्वेंशियल प्रोटेगोनिस्ट दैट वी आल्सो फाइंड दिस दोस्तों विस्की इज अ रशियन नोवेलिस्ट यस Uh, revolutionized the anti-hero archetype with the complex psychologically uh, nurtured character like uh, uh, Riskolino, yes, in crime and uh, crime and punishment, and the underground man in uh, notes from underground uh, who grappled with moral morality and madness and human condition. Yes, the uh, decadent uh, anti-hero. Yes, European literature now we see the the rise of a uh, decadent anti-hero, uh, disolunate, and in a way, hedonistic uh, figures who rebel against the boundaries of morality. Yes, like Oscar Wilde's, we find the Dorian Gray, Dorian Gray, and the protagonist of French uh, uh, symbolist world. These characters uh, embodied, uh, embodied the period's uh, fascination with the darker aspect of human nature. Yes, anti-hero in American uh, pulp fiction. Yes, American pulp fiction in early 20th century uh, embraced anti-hero archetype featuring morally uh, uh, amb ambiguous protagonists uh, driven by greed, lust, and thirst, uh, right? These flawed heroes, often uh, uh, private uh, detectives, yes, or, or a criminal mastermind, uh, captivated reader with their complex inner lives and refusal uh, to adhere to social norms, yes. The greedy, hard bullet, uh, boiled uh, stories of writers like uh, Dashiell Hammett, yes, and uh, Raymond uh, Candler, popularized anti-hero, uh, presenting characters who blurred with uh, lines between hero and villain. These anti-heroes navigated the seedy uh, underbelly of uh, urban America. Or using uh, cunning or ruthlessness, the uh, ruthlessness of uh, ruthlessness to achieve their goals, while uh, still maintaining a glimmer of more moral code. Yes, or we can say also this uh, kind of J. Gatsby. We can uh, uh, choose the example from the American uh, uh, novels, right? American dream that we find in J. Gatsby. Also, that I have mentioned in the first paragraph that uh, kind of they are captivating readers with their complex inner lives. When then after the death of J. Gatsby, we find the diary of uh, Gatsby, right? Uh, that how he is mysterious person that we find. Each and every day, uh, what he uh, has to do, he just note down, but not a single person know about it. Expect uh, from, from his father, yes. Uh, so first we have classical anti-hero who fights with God for human beings, then Shakespearean anti-hero who fight for himself, uh, yes, uh, or. Uh, he, their ambition and American, there's a kind of American anti heroes that uh, he, in a way, not fight, but um, here we find that uh, this kind of uh, line, yes, lines with uh, that good and heavy, it a uh, hero or anti hero, it's blurred now. Yes, uh, in Gatsby we find uh, we don't know that we have to consider J. Gatsby as a hero or anti hero. Yes, yes, anti hero in post war uh, film noir. Yes, uh, now it's post war era. So, how um, that uh, kind of uh, movies in cinemas, how we find this anti hero? Yes, uh, a cycle outsider. Yes, uh, an anti hero film noir. Uh, emerged as a, a, a cynical uh, dissolution uh, loner, loner, often a down on his luck, private eye, or small time crook, struggling against the uh, against a corrupt, uh, indifferent world. Yes, um, a sh a sh showy, uh, no, shadowy urban landscape. The Gritty, shadowy urban setting of film noir 
provided the uh, perfect backdrop uh, for this uh, morally ambiguous protagonist caught in a web of uh, entire uh, decide yes and uh, moral uh, compromises yes uh, seductive uh, pain fatals and the hero's downfall was often uh, precipitated by his uh, involvement his with uh, uh, calculating and manipulative fame fatal who used her uh, or her by I mean this lady character uh, beauty and cunning to uh, ensnare him yes uh, anti hero in the uh, culture of uh, 19 yes 90s in 1960s uh, rebellion against the authority moral ambiguity social outcast and culture uh, in counterculture icons yes if we find uh, um, if we consider uh, if we look with this kind of points in uh, one particular movie uh, then we have a movie named work in uh, 1965 yes and also we find that how this kind of uh, anti-hero we can find that protagonist rebellion against the authority yes uh, he, he in a way crossed the boundaries for uh, the justice for uh, morality and all Yes, anti-hero and uh, contemporary television dramas, rise of anti-hero, yes, moral ambiguity and plot characters, uh, psychological depth uh, char and character development, uh, relevance uh, to modern audience, yes, uh, if we find in early 20s, so a uh, such complex morality ambiguity just protagonists in acclaimed TV, cinema, TV dramas like uh, they are challenging traditional hero archetypes. Yes, moral ambiguity and uh, flawed characters. These anti-heroes often exhibit a um, mix of uh, sympathetic and unsympathetic uh, traits. Yes, and uh, blurring the lines between good and evil. The forcing viewers to grapple with moral uh, dilemmas. Yes, psychological depth and character development. Contemporary TV dramas delve deep into the psyche of their anti heroes, exploring their motivation, inner conflicts, and personal struggle in noised uh, character uh, driven narratives. Yes, uh, the rise of the anti hero reflects. Uh, reflect the moral ambiguity and uh, uh, disillusionment uh, resonating with audiences seeking more complex, relatable, and flawed protagonists um, in an uh, increasingly complex world. Yes, uh, evolution anti heroes in cinema, especially in Bollywood cinema, if we look. Then Shole and Diva from 1985. Then we find uh, Shole in a Shole movie, we have anti hero like Gabbar Singh. Yes, Gabbar Singh is um, in a way most known anti hero. Uh, yes, Diva and Diva, we have Vijay Verma. Yes, uh, Dawn, we have Dawn itself. Uh, Satya, Bhikkhu Matre, we have this anti hero. Uh, company we have Mali kind of anti hero yes gangs of us and forget that uh, we have Faisal Khan yes in Kabir Singh we have uh, kind of Kabir Singh itself uh, war we have Kabir by uh, which the role has been played by Rithik Roshan then how they are fighting uh, against the authority for the justice yes uh, evolution of anti-hero in the digital age. Uh, anti-hero in social media, anti-heroes in uh, streaming, anti-hero in gaming, and anti-hero in algorithms. Uh, of course, by the time we have more digital equipments, right? And nowadays, even TV serials are not we find that uh, without anti-hero, we find this it's kind of dull and boring. Yes, and they always use kind of mirch masala in their storylines so anti-heroes are normally uh, highly used and in a way also we can say that uh, in nowadays contemporary time yes if we see then uh, uh, in contemporary time we see then anti-hero are challenging heroes itself yes uh, they are uh, in a way uh, challenging hero that uh, 
anti hero has itself uh, kind of qualities that uh, they are quite emotional yes they are uh, uh, fighting for their rights own rights and uh, kind of they are challenging heroes yes uh, enduring appeal of the anti hero complexity anti hero embody moral ambiguity challenging traditional hero archetypes uh, relatability yes and transformation the anti hero archetype endures uh, because it taps into our uh, fascination with complex morality ambiguous characters uh, this uh, flawed protagonist challenges uh, traditional uh, heroic tropes reflecting the uh, noises of uh, human condition yes uh, in conclusion we can say that from the uh, beginning uh, by mean classical literature iliad and odyssey uh, by the time we have shakespearean kind of tragedy victor in victorian era we have a uh, kind of uh, earnest yes uh, from the uh, importance of being earnest yes also we can uh, find this kind of an anti hero kind of element uh, by the time the archetype of anti hero are the same the time and the character are different but the characteristic are the same yes so we can connect this uh, with the archetypal criticism of the anti hero or the shown as uh, in morning session mentioned about collective consciousness yes these are some uh, resources and thank you if you have any question so yeah my question is that how does the portrait of anti hero challenge the traditional notion or heroism in the modern uh, yes uh, Deepya, the anti-hero challenges the traditional notion of heroism and morality in a way uh, as I already pre uh, mentioned uh, while my presentation that uh, they in a way uh, how writer portrays anti-hero that uh, anti-hero are uh, emotional, more emotional, more caring, yes, uh, more enthusiastic Yes, they face many challenges in a way. Uh, so, and most important thing is they fight for <coughs> the, their or person's rights. Yes, human rights or a human or a safety. Yes, for example, uh, many Bollywood movies that we find this kind of anti heroes are fighting against the authority or uh, against the nation. Yes. Uh, uh, just because of the corruption, they want to remove the corruption, yes. Uh, so like that, we find that the challenges uh, heroism and morality. Next. Yeah, my question is, uh, how do anti-heroes often serve as a lens through which to explore complex themes such as justice, redemption, and ritual. Uh, yes, uh, Reshma, by uh, the challenging moral boundaries, yes, the uh, moral boundaries that we uh, find in uh, most of the anti-heroes characteristic, they are uh, in a way crossing the boundaries, yes, uh, what is not, uh, they are following in a way, uh, the way, which is not legal in a way, yes, and that is why they are calling uh, anti heroes. They having the quality of heroes, but uh, somehow uh, he uh, is not able to be, then that is why. And in nowadays, contemporary time, we uh, find that um, many kind of uh, anti heroes are become anti heroes just because of they are not getting their love, yes, they are not getting their jobs and their money, so that is why. Uh, also uh, we find that what is right and what is wrong they are getting it yes for example if we, uh, we want to understand by the movie then we have best example of gangs of passing yes so thank you that is it from my side hope you enjoy
So hello everyone. Uh, today I'll be dealing with the topic, the power of dark side, a study of villain's archetype. These are my personal information. And yes, uh, Ria and Reshma, they all very precisely explained about the archetypes and all. So I'll be just going through that uh, the villains are characters who don't play by the rules. No, uh, nothing holds them back. And they go beyond any norm. Uh, they do not. Uh, they do what they do. What needs to be done. Uh, but on the other hand, heroes are cool and uh, do all the good uh, ethical stuff, uh, uh, following morals. Villains are interpreted as more intelligent than the hero characters. So, uh, first one that uh, there are several uh, types of villains, but I'll be dealing with some of them. That uh, the first one is the mastermind. Uh, in one of the article of Thomas uh, Regular, uh, there are three uh, critics who are talking about uh, the masterminds of the villains. So they say that the uh, it possesses immense intelligence, uh, re rich, uh, resources, and uh, organizational control to arrange complex, large-scale criminal uh, schemes. Uh, operates with a twisted, self-centered uh, worldview that rejects societal norms and uh, moral boundaries represents the uh, disintegration uh, of order and the presence of chaos or evil that uh, challenges the established ethical framework, serves as a powerful, uh, fascinating antagonist uh, that the hero must struggle against, uh, often at the cost of uh, compromising their own values. So yes, these are the three names, Dr. Mabusa, Anton, uh, Anton Chigru, and the Joker, all embodies the embody this uh, mastermind villain archetypes in the three different ways, reflecting the changing uh, socio-political uh, anxieties of their uh, representative eras. So the first one, uh, and then the second one is the tyrant. Uh, tyrant, uh, uh, in this, uh, we can compare it here, it uh, is compared with the Charles I uh, We can also compare it with the 1984 uh, Obran, we, uh, that uh, the the one who is torturing the like uh, so the earlier or time stop at nothing to maintain power willing to cr uh, crush any opposition without a remorse um Macwell's writing uh, caused scandal by blurring the lines between virtue and political power reflecting the ruthless approach to governance charles one's action Hit, uh, fit the mold of a tyrant, leading to his uh, condemnation and ex execution, indicative of ruthless behavior. Uh, then we uh, compress uh, oppressive. Uh, they they rule through fear and immediation, denying their subject basic uh, rights and freedoms. The replacement of the tyrant by secular dictators, signifying a shift where uh, a trans uh, where trans Aggressions uh, are primarily against laws rather than scared principles. Nascent culture uh, expressed anxieties about uh, distinguished appearance from reality with uh, oppressive rules. Uh, rulers often depicted in popular theaters and uh, dominating this. Here also we can see behavior uh, ex ex exerting absolute control over subjects. Like also we can uh, we have seen that uh, in the like novel. 1984. James uh, first and Charles first, uh, first grapples with the distinction between the necessary use of absolute power and its abusive exercise, uh, reflecting a struggle with the uh, dominating tendencies. Yes, the seductress. These are the very like uh, characters um, which you have. Uh, we can say, uh, see, uh, let's see. Uh, seductress captivate with their charm using their beauty and wit to capture uh, their target. Uh, Shakespeare's Hamlet often uh, features uh, Claudius as a charming yet sinister character with uh, direct with uh, directors and playwrights making him an uh, important focal point. Uh, whereas uh, in uh, urban adaptation, evaluate him to a central position, portraying him as a charmistic figure who rules with the cruelty and depression. Or manipulative, they uh, exploit uh, the desire and weakness of others, twisting them to serve their own ends. Like Claudius is portrayed as highly manipulative, employing uh, tactics such as uh, inf inf 
informers, uh, conspiracies, uh, and even uh, ever dropping and uh, extra judicial uh, killings to maintain his power. And uh, yes, so Seductor's uh, red eye uh, mesmerizing aura that draws in even the most loyal of heroes. Uh, his regma exerts a magnetic pull on uh, pull on uh, on those around him, with the, everyone else adopting his uh, rule rather than challenging it. Now, anti-hero Dia has very deeply explained it. Then, to I'll go uh, anti-hero. Mm, here, I have also taken an example of Gatesby because uh, uh, Gatesby is uh, we can say is not a like properly uh, anti hero there are like uh, negative also and positive but here uh, in the life of uh, daisy and tom like in the life of tom especially he was a uh, like villain like he entered unexpectedly and just spoiled everything so in that case we can say uh, then um, yes another one was uh, their actions may be questionable, but anti-heroes are often motivated by a deeper purpose or sense of justice. So, yes, uh, Gatsby was there for her love. Like, he was there for her love. Uh, the tragic villain. Here, I have taken a myth uh, story, mythical story, uh, that says uh, there is a Clint, uh, Clint Manistra, uh, he, uh, a female character, who is married to Agamemnon, um, a king of uh, a king who served during the Trojan War, and uh, he, they both were married. Uh, they both were arranged married by their parents for political uh, connections and all. And uh, and then when Agamemnon was uh, during the uh, at the time of uh, war, at that time uh, Clementra uh, with his lover and his son tried to kill him, like uh, made a plan to kill him and, and uh, at the end they did so and so here we can see that they are often plugged by inner turmoils, personal demo, uh, demons or a tragic uh, backstory that shapes their destined into villain. Uh, Clementstra, uh, Clementstra actions are driven by a desire for revenge and ambition leading her to commit evil acts such as the murder of uh, his husband. Yes, tragic villains are ultimately destined, destined for a tragic end. Their downfall, a uh, consequence of their own inner turmoil, the impending doom of uh, Clementstra and Agenstra's son is for, uh, foreshadowed throughout the uh, trilogy, ultimately leading to their downfall. On the trickster, also a uh, reality, but I'll be uh, doing a uh, trickster light. Uh, in a chaos and disrupting using cunning and uh, artifice to create discord and uh, confusion. Uh, Norse mythology here is also a mythological like uh, character is uh, uh, who Loki who is uh, trying to like uh, um, play tricky things with uh, even with the gods also. So um, yes, a Norse mythology em uh, epitomizes um, mischief, mischiefs or in the chaos, born of a giant but counted among the uh, Ezer god. Loki's uh, cunning schemes often uh, often cause embarrassment and difficulty uh, for both gods and mortal alike. He was known to shape, uh, shift uh, at will, using his power uh, to play pranks and cause turmoil. Uh, they possess a sharp intellect, intellect and unreal ability to outwit their uh, opponents through dupli duplicity and trickery. Yuki was a master of manipulation and uh, deception, using his intellect uh, to outwit even the most powerful gods. Loki's ability to change his shape and sex allowed him to navigate various uh, situations with ease, gaining him the upper hand in many conflicts. Trickery uh, are widely unpredictable, keeping their foes constantly off balance and on their toes. Loki's uh, unpredictable nature made him both a valuable enemy and a for, uh, formidable foe. Uh, while he often aimed the gods with his clever plans, he was also known as act, uh, also known to act impulsively, causing chaos and disorder among the divine beings. So yes. 
Over here, I would like to conclude um, that uh, the exploration of villains' archetypes reveals their uh, pivotal role in storytelling, reflecting uh, societal fears and desires while challenging uh, conventional norms. Villains are, contribute to narrative uh, tensions, serving as foils to heroes, uh, driving plot development. Despite their allure, villains are often complex characters with a fine motivation inviting uh, em empathy and reflection on the human condition overall the study of villains archetypes and offer insight to insight into storytelling or uh, psychology and the eternal struggles between light and darkness okay and thank you now if anyone is having questions please My question is, uh, what role does audience empathy play in the port portrayal of villains? How does it affect the storytelling? Yes, uh, the audience the empathy play a huge role. Like uh, if we see uh, Frankenstein, let's see. So he was uh, like a empathetic, like uh, even the readers were also like uh, sympathetic towards him. That uh, no, that, that is not his fault. He was... Uh, like made in such a way that um, and readers are also connected and uh, there are different uh, interpret interpretations according to the readers and audiences so yes here we can connect this and it affects Oh, yes, Unnati. So my question towards you is: To what uh, extent do villain contribute to character development and narrative uh, tension and storytelling? Yes, uh, it creates um correct uh, it develops in uh, story uh, storytelling. Um, when it comes to like uh, if we see uh, there is always a type of uh, we can say uh, curiosity that villain something dark scene will come or some music will come and then we we realize oh that something villainous will uh, happen so yes it uh, it surely uh, makes uh, something like a uh, storytelling a very like uh, interesting for readers and audience so yes thank you. So very good evening, very good. So today is the fourth day of our presentation uh, from paper number one zero nine. And uh, today I'm going to deal with the topic of beyond borders, the future of literary criticism and theory. Uh, this is my personal information. Uh, this is a table of content where uh, I will uh, deal with the uh, main topic of the future of literary theory and criticism. Uh, first, I, uh, let me uh, give the brief introduction about the literary theory and criticism. So, literary theory and uh, refers, uh, refers to the uh, conceptual, conceptual framework and philosophical approach used to analyze and interpret literary text. Uh, it provides readers with a, with a set of tools and uh, framework to understand the deeper meaning, cultural context and ideolo ideological underpinning of the literature. So, uh, some major school of uh, literary theory uh, also include uh, formalism, uh, st uh, structuralism, uh, post-structuralism, uh, Marxism, uh, feminism, post-colonial theory, and uh, reader response theory. So, uh, the literary theorists uh, examine question about the nature of lit uh, literature and the role of author, the con construction of meaning and the relations between text and content. Uh, the, so literary theorists are more uh, uh, in way of the uh, 
they link the text and the, uh, their founders. Uh, the goal of literary theory is to develop systematic ways of understanding and interpreting literary works. Uh, let, um, next, I will talk about the literary criticism. So, literary criticism involves the analysis, interpretation, and evaluation of literary works. Uh, literary critics apply various uh, theor theoretical frameworks to examine and assess the uh, literary merit, themes, style, and significance of the text. The role of uh, the role of literary critics is conveyed to uh, appeal uh, relevance and importance of the literary work of the readers. Uh, literary criticism uh, can take many forms such as reviews, scholarly articles, essays, and the book length studies. Uh, the, uh, the critics are evaluated of works, uh, works, strengths, and weaknesses that situated with the literary tradition and explore, explore its culture and historical context. So the main theme of the literary criticism is to enhance the reader's understanding and appreciation of the literary text. So this uh, both introduction I'll uh, take uh, from the Kumar's article. Uh, you can refer if you want to uh, understand the literary criticism and theory. Uh, so what is the uh, use of the literary theory and uh, criticism? So uh, in uh, literary theory and criticism are uh, academic disciplines that analyze, interpret uh, literature and seeking to understand its underlying meaning, structure and functions. Uh, uh, in the literary theory, uh, in, in comparison with uh, various schools of thoughts and uh, method uh, methodological uh, that explore the different aspects of literature, such as its relationship to society, language, culture, and the human mind. And in, in criticism, uh, uh, involves the evolution and interpretation of the literary works. Uh, critic, uh, critics apply theories and the methodological idea uh, analysis text offering insight into the themes, the characters, the symbolism and the narrative techniques. They may, they may also accept the aesthetic and uh, cultural significance of the work, its historic context and in impact of the reader and society. Uh, uh, in the, uh, the article of the uh, event, uh, uh, the, the idea of the Aimless scene uh, proposed by the image uh, Abraham uh, it provides the framework of, for understanding and uh, comparing the different literary theories is identify the five fundamental aspects of the literary that uh, any theory will address. The first is the writer, second is the text, third one is audience, fourth one is uh, reality, and uh, fifth one the important one, the critic one. So uh, there also given the example about the, uh, the uh, different different theories about the mimetic theories. Effective theories, uh, expressive theories, and uh, objective theories. So, uh, the, those are theories are uh, well uh, connected with this, uh, this five fundamental aspect of the literature in the theory. So, let uh, let me come to the, the our main focus or main theme or our presentation of the future of literary theory and criticism. First, uh, let me talk about the uh, literary theory. So, based on the article of the uh, Gorky, uh, the future of literary theories is likely benefit from complementary to uh, pluralism rather than uh, exclusion. So here in uh, literary theory, uh, uh, in the article, they uh, give the uh, three, three, uh, three theories like uh, uh, complementary, uh, plural, uh, pluralism and exclusion, but uh, the main uh, focus on the uh, benefit of the uh, complementary and pluralism. So in the uh, com uh, complementary, uh, the theories are recognized the com complementary relation between different literary theories and approaches rather than uh, seeing them as a mutually ex uh, exclusive. Uh, there are if uh, there are important to create a new syntax by com combining uh, multiple ex existing approaches and such as feminist narrative combination formalism and politics. Uh, some th theoristic uh, theorists are re reconstructing and in comparing the insight from the other approach into their own framework in or in a, a productive way so they, they are uh, in a way they are uh, uh, in for uh, own set and for our uh, aspect of the their framework they are including and they are producing their own ways uh, in a pluralism they are giving the philosophical incompatibilities between some theories and coexistence of multiple and a diverse uh, approach is uh, necessary and beneficial. 
uh, reading a text from different theor uh, theoretical perspective uh, provide a fuller, uh, more balanced understanding. The clash and the dialogue between debate and approach can stimulate the future development of literary studies. Uh, in the article, uh, Gorky also argue against the tendency of the theories that trace their own uh, approach as a valid one uh, and uh, steam and uh, stigmatize uh, others. Uh, instead of uh, it uh, advocating them from the more openness, tolerance, and compensation uh, between the different literary theories in the future. Uh, the, uh, the future idea already uh, here given of the literary theory, uh, how Gorky uh, argues in this uh, article also. The diversity of approach, uh, approaches is seen as crucial of the richness and progress of the field. Uh, uh, next is the future of literary criticism. So uh, this this uh, this idea was uh, uh, more uh, uh, artificially uh, the, uh, uh, being the that year because of the Jacques Derrida, uh, the uh, French philosopher. Uh, according to the article, Glenn uh, uh, also uh, 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 talk about the future of literary criticism will be that year or it will have been that year. So uh, data uh, uh, invest uh, the possibility of literature and literary criticism become the absent and due to fragility uh, and lack of real uh, reference to for lit uh, literature. So uh, literature depends on solely of uh, prevention of the arts. Uh, so in uh, Derrida, uh, Derrida's work uh, will be uh, will be the center of the future of the literary criticism. Uh, so in, in in his work, there uh, the more uh, Central theme they're given by the uh, in the uh, future of literary criticism. So his writing uh, spanning over uh, eighteen books uh, engaged deeply with the major thinkers and text, uh, revealing new ways of reading and understanding them. Uh, so his concept like uh, trans uh, supplements, framecon uh, uh, and hymns, uh, etc., uh, that provide the logic uh, logic machine machines for the uh, rethinking to conventional critic critical categories. Uh, so, uh, Jacques Derrida's approach to reading as a teaching and his deconstruct deconstruction uh, technique that unsettled uh, assumes of, uh, assumption of uh, about representation, imitation, metaphor, etc. Uh, uh, will be continued to guide the uh, transform literary criticism. So, pure uh, empirical approach will be seen as navy and as all criticism uh, approved under the theoretical assumption. So, in a literary criticism, in the future we will need to explore the full uh, implication of the uh, Derrida's uh, deconstructive uh, insight and in order to avoid the falling into a uh, dogmatic slum. Uh, and instead of uh, awaken a new way of reading and understanding the literary text, uh, even it, it, it literary criticism does not is, uh, explicitly embrace the Derrida's idea, it will be have shaped by them. So, uh, in a way, the uh, literary uh, critics are uh, more in a way uh, seeing the Derrida uh, uh, ideas and how uh, in the in the future, in the future, future literary criticism they will also uh, recognize the idea to go on going. Uh, so, in conclusion, uh, we will find the literary uh, theory provide the tool of understanding literature deeply, while the literary criticism applies this tool to analyze and evaluate. Specific work in, in specific work we can uh, we can find out uh, the idea of the criticism and uh, how is applied how his tool is applied. Uh, but uh, that's come from the theory. Uh, the future of literary theories and uh, will uh, likely involve the embracing of a complementary approach and pluralism rather than exclusivism. As I mentioned in the uh, uh, earlier, that, uh, the, that that because of the that two things that uh, there is more import, important of the Future of literary theories. Uh, on other hand, Chadiri's uh, ideas will be heavily influenced by literary criticism in pushing toward the more this deconstructing and introspective direction. So, uh, in in, uh, in uh, essence, we find out the theories and the critics uh, critics will need to balance the diverse perspective and engage with innovative ideas to enrich the study of literature in the future. So how we can find that this, uh, this idea will also conclude in the future as well, that how criticism uh, uh, and theory uh, about uh, in the future, their uh, idea of the daring that 
will be concluded. So these are my references and thank you very much. Uh, if you have any question or doubt, you can ask. So, Jai, can you discuss instance uh, where literary theory has challenged uh, conventional interpretations of uh, classical texts, leading to new perspectives and insights? So, uh, there are there are some uh, texts like uh, uh, if you find out the two theory of the first is the famous theory. In famous theory, we will find out the uh, text uh, from the uh, Bride and Prejudice in the, the character of uh, Elizabeth Bennet. Uh, how uh, gender roles and uh, are showing in this uh, text about uh, and the uh, other is the uh, uh, theory of uh, post colonial. Uh, they were uh, we can find the text of uh, the uh, heart of darkness. The heart of darkness with the uh, we can find out the colonial uh, colonial thing in that. So uh, the the perspective we can find in the uh, those are the text uh, as a, as an example. So yeah, that's my answer. Anyone? Else? Yes, Jay, can you please explain the Derrida's concept of logical logic machine uh, applies uh, to rethinking the conventional critical categories within literary criticism? Please. So, in uh, uh, as I mentioned in the data uh, concept, they, and how uh, his idea is more likely in the future they are going to uh, interpret. But uh, uh, in uh, literary criticism, when he, uh, we talk about the uh, category, categories, then he, he is trying to uh, say that we have to understand more about uh, this idea of the criticism, uh, literary criticism. So, how in the, he, he also trying to evaluate with uh, the form of uh, logic machine. And uh, how uh, in the future we, we will also find out that what will going to happen when the Derrida's ideas will be concluded in this uh, 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 point of the logic machine. Uh, so that's my answer. Thank you, everyone. Hello everyone. Uh, my topic is uh, decoding figurative language insight from I nature. Uh, as you saw, my, um, said that the title should be I nature's practical criticism. These are my personal details. Uh, these are the table of contents. Introduction. Uh, renewed literary critic I nature's fundamentally challenged the traditional view of figurative langu language as a morally orla ornamental. Arguing instead that metaphor, imagery, and other form of figuration were essential to how we make sense of the world. From everyday idioms to the poetic musings of great writers, these linguistic devices play a vital role in how we convey meaning, evoke emotion, and expand the boundaries of our understanding. I. A. Richards, critic of figurative language. I. A. Richards, a prominent literary theorist was a critical of a overuse of figurative language in writing. He argued that the employment of metaphor, simile, and other literary devices can often obscure the true meaning of a text. According to Richards, the reader can become overly focused on a surface level imagery, missing the underlying message the writer intends in to convey. Richards believed writers should prioritize clarity and directness in the language rather than relying intensely on ornate, ornate or involuted figures of speech. He emphasized the importance of considering the contextual and cultural factors that shape the interpretation of figurative language as this can vary in this very context is to be different uh, widely across different audiences and the time periods. In Richard's view, the reliance and figurative language can hinder effective communication by introducing ambiguity and obscuring the writer's intended meaning. Four kinds of meaning. Uh, 
sense feeling tone and intention now uh, here we can see uh, in the sense there is a meaning of the word used in the figurative language we can uh, sense like uh, here can we take an example of uh, the sky is a pink in here the sky is a reflect uh, atmosphere and the pink uh, refers or we can say reflect the color a feeling uh, it uh, association with the conventions evoked by the figurative language a uh, feeling we can say a uh, sad or excitement or uh, aggressive anything a tone a tone refers to the overall attitude or mood expression expressed through the use of uh, figurative language as we can see a uh, tone like how we can see a uh, say or how we can uh, convey the poetry or read the poetry or tone of like uh, as we say like she is looking nice the tone is a uh, uh, good and positive uh, intense intention this is an underlying purpose of meaning that the speaker or writer is trying to convey through the figurative expression misunderstanding in poetry according to i richards poetry requires a different interpretative approach compared to prose as a figurative language conveys the deeper multilayered meanings beyond literal sense those who dismiss poetic devices as ridiculous ex exaggerations fail to grasp this complexity necessity a more no sense understanding to fully appreciate it poetry community communicative power uh, here is a four types of misunderstanding a uh, first misunderstanding of the sense of poetry careless and intuitive reading uh, rhyme or uh, irregular syntax Second is over literal reading. A third is a defective scholarship, and a fourth is different meaning in the meaning of words in poetry and prose. Uh, here I took an example of a Solomon Gray poem. Uh, this is the point that people found following uh, problems with this poem. A uh, first one is cloud cannot have desires. A mentor cannot have imaginations. Imaginations cannot trade. Milk does not smile, and a dim with flowers is rather weak. For flowers are bright things. A tall towers do not run so far as a human sense can comprehend. Might be an interesting sight. Uh, well, like we can say, a poetry requires a different interpretative approach uh, compared to prose to be rightly understood. The value of figurative language. Figurative language transcends literal meaning, evoking exper experiences and expanding understanding in ways prosaic language cannot. Dangers of over, over literal examination, reductive literal analy analysis of figurative expression, risking mis deeper la layers of meaning, underscoring the need of new such interpre interpretations. Richards on personification, so it as deflecting a fundamental continuity process, not just decoration. Richards on visual memory emphasize the centrality of visual imagery, sensory associations, and constructing meaning through language. Richards on com comparative criticism, advocate for examining works in broader context to better understand the functions of figurative devices. Uh, here I took uh, uh, one article from uh, uh, but reading uh, the article title is uh, the literal and the figurative. The main idea of the article is to challenge the traditional opposition between a literal and a figurative meaning. The author demonstrates that the many forms of figurative language can become so conventional that they are effectively literal, while even ostensibly literal language can the maintain one multiple context dependent meanings the article concludes that the relationship between literal and figurative is most is more complex and ambiguous than the simplest simplistic dichotomy typical assumed the article argues the distinction between literal and figurative meaning is more complex than a simple diagram as the many figurative expressions become conventional and literal over time why given Ostensibly, literal language can be multi-layered. In a conclusion, uh, while AR, uh, AI Richards criticism, criticism of figurative language offer valuable insight into in the complexity of communication, it is essential to recognize that figurative language plays an indispensable, 
indispensable sorry a role in enriching in, in human exp expression and understanding i am richards analysis of figure language and its four tones refer a valuable framework for understanding poetry's emotional nuances however misunderstanding poetry can arise from solely focusing on figurative elements neglecting broader contextual factors the appreciation sorry the appreciate poetry fully readers must consider both figurative language and other literary elements to grasp its depth and meaning uh, these are my references thank you now if you have any question you can ask me so to three my question is uh, in what ways does richardson's framework for analyzing figurative language differ from traditional approach uh, richard's framework for analyzing uh, analyzing figurative language differ from a uh, traditional approach it uh, uh, ai richard's uh, more focusing on a uh, language or uh, language that creates a meaning like uh, he is not uh, following the tradi or traditional ways of uh, that like uh, use of simile metaphors and uh, imagery and uh, other uh, devices of uh, uh, figurative language he is uh, different like he is focusing on the language and its meaning that it conveys to the uh, reader or uh, listener Uh, so, Tripti, according to you, what do you think about Richard's belief that uh, figurative uh, language adds depth to communication? Um, according to uh, AI, Richard, uh, in a figurative language, he uh, uses uh, metaphor, simile, imagery, and the other form of so, uh, figurative language. Uh, he, like, uh, depending on uh, not just uh, read and uh, going and just forgetting work but uh, uh, this uh, metaphor simile and uh, imagery add more depth to that the reader or a listener can feel it or uh, uh, his uh, thinking and uh, it's uh, uh, giving his own thoughts and feelings and uh, this communication uh, this communication adapts to reader and uh, listener for more uh, a remarkable reading and a more uh, uh, valuable, valuable reading. Thank you. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, today morning the feedback that is given you go through that also. So many of those things are applicable to you also. Uh, so in that we were talking that uh, first two or three points uh, most of you are able to do but when it comes to the bottom point for example in Hindi or in villain Ria and Unnati they were talking about so what is your interpretation of that uh, how uh, in a larger context of culture or change of time, uh, that passage or archetype can be seen. Is that archetype evolving any time, or is it the same thing? And one can say that it's changing. So, uh, why is it? What is? Uh, and our own that that uh, to all those who work on archetypal criticism and try to apply uh, that. Uh, the same thing was about Rasa theory. Also. When you uh, try to apply it on something, then you have to be very careful. Uh, in our material website, there are a couple of articles that you can refer to. One is on this Vakti. He was making on that. So, you used it as an irony, and that way you gave example. But still, uh, Vakrokti has many layers and many types of Vakrokti. Uh, and that is discussed in uh, a study in Macbeth on our website that will give that there is this quote and hear how Vakarokti is coming that needs to be uh, uh, explored also uh, Pallavi had a very good article uh, that, that also was a good way to look uh, as an example 
plot structure and development of this in Shakuntala. The great thing here is that article also I have linked on material website that can be seen. It is a good case study to understand. In morning also we have discussed as a case study for the same thing in Indian poetics. Uh, Kushi had mentioned this article, Swapan Koshi, but uh, you are not referred to anything for that is a good book, Swapan Koshi. Common uh, study of Shakespearean tragedy to Rust can be referred also. I think you have purchased for library, central library. So maybe from that you will be able to get that book. It is also for application of the concept. Uh, one, some of you are just putting the names of the, the slides, but it is not cited from that. It all that in parentheses you have to put the name. So just putting the name uh, you have to take. And uh, one linguistic marker that you are using that I have taken from this, that is not proper. So to uh, so article, is this of the opinion that way you have to include. you don't have to say that i have taken this this article or i have taken that from this article that is the right way to put the uh, uh, interview it into your discussion that so and so article so and so writer is saying this uh, or that Carl Jung Reshma, you have to, spelling is Jung uh, but it is Jung uh, la miserable, uh, less miserable, we write it as less miserable, la miserable, uh, is that right? But uh, also on this, but still, uh, uh, it, it sounds, it is like you have to study, uh, we, uh, next semester and we will study Derrida, uh, then you can uh, do that, those things. It looks very advanced kind of a thing. Something like uh, uh, the jumping straight away without taking other steps so uh, that way it will be seen that still there is, there is structural there uh, and then post structuralism will come and then Derrida will come so when uh, we talk about future so you can't give proper answers because uh, Derrida is difficult to understand uh, in uh, the next semester when we talk we will see that so there is how many students do this mean somebody has prepared but it is quite applicable in our regular activities also uh, in uh, google classroom activities uh, video is to be seen but uh, directly mark is done and then they will see submit the work later on or you just start the blog without writing anything link is given yeah. that is jumping over uh, the, the things uh, that uh, uh, is that still uh, some basic understanding is required uh, Carl Jung, uh, Carl Jung's archetypes and North of Prize archetypes. Uh, this is Asha who was presenting this question also huh, on that. Uh, how it is applicable to literature? I think Yashraj asked that question. Uh, morning also we had this problem, but I was not able to throw light on this morning. So this point that Carl Jung said about archetypes, but that was about personality types people and how people's different personalities are there and that we divided people uh, uh, under archetypes that idea is taken by north of fry and applied in literary criticism uh, so carl jung is not directly doing criticism uh, so uh, you can't use carl jung's archetypes in criticism directly it is done by uh, north of fry and he comes up with the idea of archetypes in literature from where he is taking that from carl jung's archetypes uh, but those archetypes are not normal people, human beings. Uh, uh, North of Fry brought in. Uh, uh, so it is uh, applied in many disciplines. Psychologists uh, also applied Carl Jung's this and sociologists also, anthropologists also. In literature, North of Fry. Bringing that idea. So that difference uh, is very important to be seen. Okay, Rahul also uh, made well. Uh, there was one article which I have put that was a good article on cinema and uh, uh, Rust theory, which I have uh, linked on the material website uh, also from this presentation. Okay, so with this we end uh, today's uh, presentation and uh, wish you all the best for tomorrow.